and then Fraser, it was about 10 o'clock last night. Mm. Uh, he was getting ready to debut for South Warrnambool, of course, a Rebels player that trains with the VFL side for Geelong. Uh, but we needed players. We looked like we had five Western Australians out at that period. And so we're searching to see how we could make up our numbers. And, and he was certainly a boy that we knew played in the NAB League as a good player there and might have been able to help us. So we've honoured that uh, commitment when the five WAs were back in. Uh, Fraser still become one of our team. Met the boys just in the last hour and a half. So he'll be out there. He'll be wearing jumper number 31. So what, what an opportunity for young And he uh, came off Fraser. a sleeper game last weekend. They had seven goals to one behind at half time. The, his team down there at, uh, at Bendigo last week. And managed to, you know, had a super second half, so he's another one that's coming into this game off really good form. So we've got some NAB League players playing for Geelong too, for those who might be keeping an eye out on those. So Charlie Ham, uh, Geelong Falcon from St Mary's, which is just over the back of GMHBA Stadium, also Torquay originally. He'll line up for the Cats uh, and also young uh, Marcus Herbert as well from the GWV Rebel. South Warrnambool as well. He's Geelong VFL listed and gets an opportunity this afternoon as well, Steve. Exactly. Both coming off near best on ground games of themselves, like Last week, Charlie Ham will provide a lot of run of half back for the for the for Geelong, and and I'm sure Liam Herbert and Marcus Herbert, the two brothers, will uh, will both be figuring around the around the centre square for the Cats at some stage during the game. So. Look forward to watching all those boys play. Now, the other one, too, is Paul Sapatolis. He's Category B listed with Geelong, but has been allowed to go back and play with the Western Jets and has played uh, three games with the Jets to start the NAB League season. Yeah, but a, he plays today for the Cats. It's terrific the fact that they've been able to put him in there and he's been going well. The boy from Maribyrnong Secondary College and uh, he's been a really good acquisition for the Jets. So it's local boy Conway that's going to start in the ruck. Also looking inside the midfield there, it looks like uh, also in there is Sonzi, Dacos, and I think Horn is also in there. So that'll be the starting on Ball Brigade for the NAB AFL Academy, Kev. And Dacos, the captain of Australia, announced last night. Uh, and then Jason Horn, his vice captain, the South Adelaide boy, been in great form in the last two years playing senior footy in the Sandville. Yeah, they're playing for the AFL Commission Chairman's Cup, best on ground to pick up the MCC Chairman's Medal. And not that you'll want to be reminded of this, but the Academy tipped them over about a decade ago in one of these games that have been going since. Uh, a number for 30 years, I think we've been in the academy now, Kev, and the ball's gone forward, and the first mark taken from the kick by Roberts from South Australia. He sends it long, looking down there for Mac Andrew, who slipped over. Dropping the mark for the Cats was Neil Andrew. A quick snap out of the pack, has missed to the left, and through for a behind. And what a day for Mac Andrew, a boy that we'd read in today's age, barracks for the Cats. He's, play, he's got a Skinner cat today. That's his aim to skin a cat. This Sudanese boy is uh, added to the squad early in the week. Uh, Mac Andrew has been in terrific form for the Danny Nong Stingrays in the NAB League. I watched him play last weekend. He played forward. He played in the ruck. He's a boy also that, at, at 200 centimetres that can play out in the wing or even down back. So a uh, marvellous young athlete and uh, a proud moment when he received his jumper last night from... Uh, uh, Changatu Jihaf, the CJ, the flying machine from Hawthorne, also a Sudanese boy, born youngster. You now he's Melbourne Next Gen Academy, Mac Andrew, is that right? Correct, correct. You're almost developing them before our eyes every week, he just gets better and better, young Mac. So the Cats have gone forward, it's Constable with a left foot kick into the forward pocket, a bouncing ball that just pitches and bounces back towards De Conning. De Conning, an All-Australian at under 18 level a couple of years ago, a handball off, and a quick snap at goal, the Sapatolis gave it off, and the snap might have been Smith for the Cats kicking the first. But Steve, what are you looking for out of today? For the, from the academy boys, but also the VFL listed Geelong boys. Yeah, I suppose some cohesion early for the for the academy kids. Look, it, it is a real challenge, and there's no doubt about coming together on a on a Thursday for a first time for a Saturday morning game. But yeah, just looking for that cohesion and seeing if the boys a can play their role and um, and continue on the traits that they've shown through through the early rounds of the of their various seasons. So just an unfortunate bounce there for the academy and landing with DeConning. That first clearance with the captain and the vice captain in, in Dacos and Horn in there, there's some real talent in there for the AFL Academy boys, so look to, uh, to see them generate some more work around the stoppages. So Conway again to do the ruck work against Darcy Fort from the Cats. Fort will win the tap this time. Dacos couldn't take the footy, had it stolen by Narkel. The Cats will go forward through Holmes. Holmes bangs it long, but they've got numbers back there. The Academy, chance to clear a handball off, finds Austin Harris. Harris will bring it wide, looking for a marking option, going to his knees but not completing the mark with Finn Callahan and through his fingers and out of bounds for a boundary throw. And so for those tuning in through afl.com.au, it's four 25-minute quarters straight and uh, the, the uh, Commission Chairman's Cup on the line. Kev, do you remember the day that the Academy tipped over Geelong? It's about 10 or 12 years ago. The Cats still talk about their disappointment <laughs> out of that day. 
Yeah, look, um, we'll just concentrate on the Bulls. It heads up around the forward line here and uh, as the Cats look to get their second goal on the board, but we, we might tell the longer version of it the second here. <laughs> but so Over the years, probably for 15 years, they play as Australia, actually. The academies, the, the yeah. program they're yeah. in, and then when they represent Australia, we have to have uh, state league opponents. And in different years, we've played West Perth, mm. we've played Williamstown, we've played the Casey Demons, we've played Geelong on a couple of occasions. So we, we try and come up with an opponent that's got some listed players in it to give uh, the Australian under-18 team a real good hit out. Uh, and... Uh, uh, that's what it's proven to be in the development of just so many of the AFL players of today. Of course, Joel Selwood, Paddy Dangerfield, they're products of the, the uh, NAB AFL Academy. In their day, we played against the Irish. Way back mm. with Joel, we played against the Irish in international rules. But these days, um, that opportunity is not there, and so it'll be against uh, the state league players, like, you know, the play in what we now call the VFL up the east coast of Australia. They'll get the chance to play against listed players in that way and uh, that's just a great learning experience uh, for the boys as they play for the Australian under-18 team today. Jordan Johnston will have a shot at goal from the former GWV Rebel. Now flicking between East Point in the Ballarat League and the Cats and he's kicked their second so two straight 12, the Cats have made a, a fast start in this clash. We've gone just on four minutes in this opening term from GMHBA Stadium. Tom King, Kevin Sheehan in the broadcast booth from GMHBA Stadium via AFL.com.au. Steve Canole, Brisbane Lions recruiting manager, is with us as well and furiously taking notes. How many reams of paper do you go through in a day, Steve? Is you oh, there's, yeah, there's a fair few at the <laughs> moment. There's plenty of games on the fixturing. has been terrific by the AFL and every, all their subsidiary states. So, yeah, lots of footy to watch. And at Geelong midfield's very experienced, isn't it? They've got some good players, Constable and Fort and, and Narkel around the drop of the ball. So it's going to be a real challenge for the young academy kids. Conway got his hand on it. Fort did the roving, though. Johnson attempts to tackle and gives a handball off, and the quick goes forward from Chalcraft, who kicks wide and finds Luke Smith, who's a busy former Murray Bush Ranger. Been in the Cats a couple of years now. He drives a kick to 25 out from goal. The defensive effort, good by the Australian team. Constable, though, has picked up the loose footy to give it to Fort. Chance for Stevens, who bangs it long towards goal. It's off hand and through for a behind. How much do they, the Australian boys embrace this challenge, Kev? Do you just get the sense that, oh, gee, we get to test ourselves against, you know, tried and tested AFL players and those, you know, VFL-listed big-bodied men as well? Just a wonderful learning experience it is for them. Uh, they know that uh, ultimately their aim for, for most of them is all their lives to get onto an AFL list. This is a learning experience that, gee, there's so many things I still have to learn yet. There's nothing wrong with that, so it's a bit of a, a litmus test of how ready they are. So you wouldn't expect that every contest they can win it because they could probably 10 kilos lighter in, in, in body weight and strength. And, of course, uh, they won't have the same cohesion as the Geelong team that train together. But what we want to see is some moments at least. And hopefully most of these kids have their moment or their quarter and we get a thin slice of their capability. So that's what the cl clubs are looking for. And I'm interested in Steve and the way they evaluate it here. You've got at least three people here. Maybe you have more. You, you divide it up on what you're looking at. Some clubs will divide up and look at six each. Or uh, what, What's your method? Well, even just Jason Horn there, like, you know he's a very talented player, but the, the want to run from behind and chase down, it's, uh, you know, he's, he's an exceptional player with the footy, but showing that off the ball stuff has now gone the other way and allowed that uh, allowed them to get forward, and big Jack Williams pops up and takes a really strong contested mark, so it just shows the, the all-round skills that some of these boys are happy to show. Jack Williams, 11 goals in three games so far this year for the East Fremantle Colts, and a chance to put the Australian team on the board. He'll kick from the left forward pocket at the Barwon River end of GMHBA Stadium from 40 metres. Yeah, he's pretty happy with it off oh, the boot. So I tell you what, he liked it straight away. That's right. a nice finish. Well, that's a good thin slice to have, isn't it? The strong mark and then what a kick. And a boy of 194 centimetres. That, uh, that makes a statement straight away. Um, He's a very talented boy. We saw him last year as a young under-17 playing back for a fair bit of ability. He'd read the play, intercept mark, and the second half of the year went forward for East Frio and had a fantastic end to the year and a super. So they had a talent day, a couple of talent games at the end of last year, and he really proved himself and a worthy acquisition to, into this squad. I'm sure he'll, uh, he'll keep presenting up there. 
throw and of another. course, the WA boys played most of the year. The mm. SA boys most of last year. The Victorians, well, they had about one practice match, yes. <laughs> nothing much at all. So there's a massive gap in their development year in their 17th year. Uh, so then they've had their couple of games this year, got through three games, most of them. So they're a wee bit underdone, but uh, I'm sure you're going to see some great signs from them uh, in different moments uh, today. Skew with bounce. We'll come back. Ned Moyle has gone in to the ruck to have a run. Ned Moyle, 18 hitouts and 11 touches last week uh, for the charge. He actually racked against Paul Sapatolis last week. The Cats are going to come up with it. Constable gives it to Holmes. Holmes will go to right half forward looking for McLaughlin. There's Maris out there. That's a tough ask on the very tricky McLaughlin for Maris. And here's McLaughlin coming up with it from 35 metres and missing to the right. So Fraser Maris is probably... You know, after the very late call-up, Kev, he's probably got a lot of nervous energy to expel very early. Well, I did speak to him briefly in the rooms, and he said, well, you've just got to take your chances. He had a terrific attitude to it all. Get out and enjoy it. Why would you enjoy the chance to, uh, to play at GMHBA Stadium in amongst some of the, uh, the best youngsters around Australia as well as against listed players, 10 or 12 that have played some AFL games for the Cats, and uh, a, a wonderful once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for him. Yep, represent your country. You can't take that away from him. He'll keep that jumper forever and a day, no matter what happens with his footy career. Moyle and Sapatolis, as they did last week in the NAB League, go head-to-head. Chance to clear for Sonzi. He got a handball off, slung in the tackle was Matty Johnson. Ball comes back towards Sonzi. And now running onto it is Ozzie Harris. He's got it at centre-half back, but he's dragged down to ground. And the Cats are going to reef it away. Chance now for Charlie Ham, who is NAB League listed mm. with the Falcons, and it's a neat little kick to the 50 to Sapatolis. It goes to the pocket, and the mark taken, and I reckon that's, again, Smith, who has been very lively in this opening term. Luke Smith, originally from the Shepparton Bears, through the Murray Bush Rangers, and now making a name for himself in the Geelong VFL lineup, and still holding out hope that he may too get his opportunity. Tight angle, left forward pocket from 45, a driving kick that's going to be contested on the line. Head over the footy was Cooper Hamilton, but not coming away with it as the tackle is laid. And that's Oscar Brownless bringing him to ground in the right forward pocket. So the game's just settled a little bit, Stephen Kev, fair to say? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think the goal of the AFL boys, the academy lads, would just be to settle it down now. And uh, There's a quick snap he's missed down there. So just to, yeah, to settle it down and start to get the hands on the footy, and I'm sure once they sort of find their feet at this level, they'll get better as the game unfolds. Finn Callahan got an early 18th birthday present, turns 18 on Monday, and he's an Australian rep this, this morning. High kick to half-back. Mac Andrew's going to come with a run from behind, but a good, strong grab at the front taken by Josh Gibkiss. Well, he paid the grab. Gibkiss out of St. Patrick's College in Ballarat, but he's kicked. He's not a good one. To the interchange. And that's his weapon, isn't he's it, Steve? He's had a super start. Yeah. He has any shifter. His yeah. ability to intercept Mark. He's got good speed and um, and he's very, very courageous aerially. So uh, he's got a job down there now on Big Darcy Fort. So we'll see how he holds up against the big fella. Cats have got McLaughlin out the back with a loose footy and the outside of the right boot has missed through for a behind. So there's lots of terms used in sort of identifying players. Some people call it their weapon. What are they great at? What are they super, what's their point of difference? But the weapon for Gibbs us is that jump and the clean hand. Showed it there. Uh, so this is, uh, that's what he absolutely stars at. Kicked a half back looking there for a mark. And it's a good strong one by Matty Johnson who's been okay early. Spent some time in the midfield. Johnson will... Send a kick to Mac Andrew. He juggles. He can get it over the top. He looked for 50, but it was knocked from his grasp by Cam Tahini. Umpire says, check behind you, Mark. Gives a handball off to cruising by Josh Fay. Fay sends it long inside forward 50 to a one on one back with a flight. No mark taken. Falling to ground was Van Ruyen. And the Cats are going to pick up the loose footy and then go across half back. Chance to run. Nick Burke with the footy for the Cats. And they lead the Australian team by eight points, 2 3 15, 1 1 7. So there was a couple of early goals, but I reckon Tark and Lockie will be happy with the way they've been able just to set up. It's going to take some time when you've only had a bunch together for 72 hours, Kev. Yeah, no doubt. They'll, uh, they'll be sort of uh, working in their groups. They've had the defensive group together, the midfield group together, the forward group together over a couple of days, uh, not just, uh, I suppose, in training groups, but spending some time together uh, in a few meetings, uh, as well as uh, even 
just some of the downtime, spending time with each other to get to know each other. Quint Narkel got out the back. The Cats got them defen- in defensive transition, and Narkel finishes from 45 metres to kick the Cats third. They're 3 3 21. Australia are 1 1 7. As we are in this first, quarter, about halfway through now as we approach 13 minutes gone. So, Steve, how much time on the road did you miss last year, and how much time on the road will you get? in comparison this year to be able to look at some footy? I was a little bit fortunate. I I, I did attend the AFL Quarantine Hub last year, which allowed me to spend a bit of time in Brisbane and then get across to Adelaide, but nothing like previous years. And you have to be a little bit selective, you know, as uh, with all clubs now, budgets are sort of still a little bit slow to get back to where they were. So, But we'll start to get around and in preparation for the national championships to later this year. So when the 17s and 19s are held, we'll certainly be attending all those games and hopefully get across to Perth next week for their super round, but we'll, we'll see how that goes with their, with their quarantine situation at the moment. Things have just been tipped on their head in the last 24 hours. <laughs> May well have been, I think. <laughs> just a little, just slightly. Bounce back in the middle. Moyle will do the ruck work against Sapatolas. He did well, Sapatolas, mm. to tap it to himself and then kick it forward to a one-on-one. Good win, though, at half-back by Faye. He's been OK, the product from Queanbeyan. He kicks it forward to half-forward and fighting for the footy. That might be Lockie Rankin who's got his head over the footy, the late inclusion. In name fact, it's Matty Roberts. Both got the red hair. Mm. Roberts uh, coming off 37 touches last week for Woodville he's, West Torrens. Yeah, no, he's, against, a, yeah, against he's, West Torrens. he's a South Adelaide boy, and he's actually came came down to Melbourne the week before with his school at St Peter's and played some games down here. So he's been travelling up and down for a few weeks, and he's a very consistent performer at all levels. It's going to be a free kick against Australia. Constable takes the advantage, gives it off to Smith. And then good defensive work by Faye. He's been uh, solid at cross halfback. And if you're talking about the weapon, well, his weapon's that left foot kick. Mm. We've seen an example of that with the kick here on the, the wing closest, the uh, the camera. Uh, magnificent kick in a game earlier in this year between the Murray Bush Rangers and the Giants Academy mm. uh, up uh, up in the ovens in Murray area. He, he was kicking from full back to the centre of the ground. Is a magnificent kick uh, on that preferred left side. Moyle bangs it forward, but the ball bounced over the head of Roberts and the Cats will come up with it through Narkle, who was able just to fend off a couple of Australian players. Good smother by Horn. The ball spills for Dacos. Trying to get his head over the footy was Callahan. Hands and knees constable for the Cats. Ball's just on the outer wing. And we're going to get a ball up, I suspect, as we've ticked past. It's gone very quick. 18 minutes have gone blink of an eye, Steve. They, they do. They fly through the straight 25s. Um, most of the junior competitions in Australia play that now, and it works well. 21 playing 7, I should say it's 15 minutes, the smaller scoreboard catching me out there. Moyle with a quick kick forward that will bounce away from Matty Roberts and out of bounds for a boundary throwing. So as a recruiting manager, your draft board, is it started to take some sort of shape, even though we're only in April and still seven months away from the, the NAB AFL draft? No doubt, no doubt it starts sort of, well, for us, the... No championships last year, but the under-16s two years ago, you start to form a list, and, it, and the fact that the Adelaide and, and, and uh, WA boys and all the other states played last year, so it is starting to take shape, and it's, as with always, boys pop up and, and appear as the season unfolds, and some of those boys are out here today, which, is, which has been a great opportunity for them. What are you looking for, especially from the Victorian boys who were limited with their football last year? Is there something you, you're hoping to see from them that they may have worked on on their game in isolation? You see, you see, you see the boys play as 16-year-olds, but in fairness and in credit to a lot of them, gee, they did a power of work throughout the lockdown last year when they weren't playing, weren't playing football as such. So it's a credit to the clubs they're involved in and the structures that they've been able to really hit the ground running this year. They're going to go forward here, Australia. Dacos got it for Faye, and he put it nicely onto the chest of Matty Roberts, just put it into space for him to run onto with the man on the mark standing 45 from goal. I think Schiffer talks about weapons, and this boy, versatility is right up there. Schiffer isn't. He can play forward and hit the scoreboard. He's been on a wing. He can play through the midfield for South Adelaide. He's, he's, uh, he's just got multifaceted uh, abilities to, to his game, uh, young, young Roberts. He's going to kick from 52. He's really driven that ball, and he's just pushed it to the right, uh, left rather and through 4A behind. So now one goal, two for Australia. In Geelong, 3-3-21 in this first quarter. Hope you're enjoying the live stream through afl.com.au. Tom King and AFL Talent Ambassador Kevin Sheen with you. Steve Canole, Brisbane Lions Recruiting Manager, joining us for this first quarter. A little bit later, Troy Selwood, Geelong Recruiting uh, boss, is going to join us. And also Leon Harris. Brisbane Lions talent scout, former Fitzroy star, and of course long-serving 
AFL Vic employee. We'll have a chat to us a little bit later. Jason Doherty to call the second half of action from GMHBA Stadium as the Cats just open up Australia through the middle of the ground. And Smith, who's been involved prominently in this first quarter, gives it to Simpson. Simpson to a one-on-one, puts it over the head of Jordan Johnston, who will find it on the ground and try and get it back to Holmes. But there's numbers back there for the Academy of Australia to clean up. And at the bottom of that pack, the yeah, tackle is late. We'll get one. And Tom, just looking at some of the leading possession winners in the in this first quarter, Dacos at the top of the list with seven disposals. Faye, you mentioned many times, with six. And uh, for Geelong, it's the Australian side, Constable with uh, with eight, Narkel with six. That was Blaine O'Loughlin, of course, nephew of Michael and tied to the Crows Academy. Is Blaine O'Loughlin? Yes, and he's been in fantastic form too uh, as a defender uh, at under-18 level in, uh, in South Australia this year. His uncle, of course, Mickey O, coached this program for a number of years. The 300-game player with the Sydney Swans, a champion of the game, a great goal kicker and a mentor to, to young Blaine as well. Here's Mac Andrew picking it up nicely on the bounce after the kick went looking for O'Loughlin. A kick now into space, a chance for Erasmus to run onto it. The West Australian kicks to half forward, but just slipping as he went to come to the footy, Jack Williams, and they've turned it over. Neil Erasmus, first time I think we might have called him this afternoon. He's had a solid start to the Waffle Seed. I think he's averaging 28 touches a game. Oh, he's been outstanding. He's played in their premiership last year mm. and uh, and this year's played predominantly as a half forward and been able to move into the midfield and he'll play a few more games when he gets back before his hail commitment's kicking oh, in. Oh, fair fly to Mark. That's a great grab. That might be Jordan Johnston taking that mm. from East Point. No, I reckon Steve Canole might have just uh, taken a couple of notes <laughs> on who Jordan Johnston. He does have he, do, he does have he does have the jumpy feet, doesn't he? He's a talented, talented young boy. That's a nice grab from the Ballarat product. And, of course, Tom Stewart, you only have to mention his name to know that there will be players who are older than 18 years or 19 years of age that will emerge as stars of the AFL that will come through the State League or come through the Geelong program. And, of course, uh, what a wonderful player he's turned out to be. Uh, Not ready at 18, not ready at 19, but through his 20th, 21st year, he'll become a a star at VFL level. Johnston Uh, finishes nicely to kick his second of the quarter. The Cats fourth as we approach... 20 minutes gone in this opening turn. 4 3 27, Australia 1 2 8 as the battle for the Commission Chairman's Cup continues. Uh, do you marvel, Kev? At, obviously, you've got an affinity with the Cats for the career you had here, but do you look at what they've done with their VFL program and been able to uh, turn so many, you know, and not, not just necessarily for Geelong, there's been others as well that have yeah. come out of the program and got their opportunity? Yeah, well, clubs have just have to adjust over the years. Now, we've gone to the national competition 30-odd years ago. Uh, you just have to adjust. Uh, numbers on lists have altered a little bit. you just got to go with the flow. Some of those things you don't control, but the development of the ones that aren't playing in your, in your senior side, you do control, even if it's 15 players and the program needs to be a decent one. You've got to back your system to produce something with, uh, from the boys that have got some talent. You can't just expect they're going to bob up one day as, uh, as AFL players. You've got to put an enormous amount of work into them and uh, you'll re- reap the rewards and you, you see that even with Richmond, the number of rookies that end up in uh, in their premiership side uh, they work on their players, they back their coaches and uh, clubs have been successful Geelong one of them through doing that Blake Howes just nabbed holding the ball there as the kick came in I think it might have been Matty Johnson getting his hands on the footy again from that centre clearance, he goes to a one on one, ball gets over the head and into the hands of Josh Gibkiss, it's out of bounds, we'll get a boundary throw in right on centre wing here at a beautiful GMHBA stadium, a nice mid-autumn morning here in Geelong. Some of the boys from out west in the northern states probably think it's a little bit cool. Well, I think Troy Selwood, who's taking over me in a minute, called it God's country down here, so I'm sure uh, I'm sure the boys are appreciating playing on the deck. For the majority of the kids, it would have been the first time that they've been out here, so great, great opportunity. Knuckles kick forward, and it's just overrun there by Gibkiss. So the pressure comes now from O'Loughlin, who did well just to hold things up and then flicked a handball up to Johnson, but he's been pinned for a throw, in fact, just as Dacos was about to burst away. We're already calling one of Dacos at AFL level. How excited are we going to be calling two next year, Kev? Yeah, he's a very talented player. Yeah, subject to a bit, of course. He's father-son Collingwood, but uh, it is uh, the conventional bidding system where... A club, a club that's got an early choice, no doubt, will uh, we'll put in a bid and Collingwood need to match it to claim uh, their player. But he's been in magnificent form in the NAB League, just uh, almost a class of his own, the way he's been playing. A goal kicker, 
So he's a midfielder that can go forward and be very, very dangerous. What and access? A, and a terrific to Colling- young leader as well. What access to Collingwood VFL have to him, if any? Yeah, he'd play a, a small handful of games there. He played a practice match there early in the year. Uh, but, yeah, he would be able to push up. His priorities will be uh, at playing at Oakley and then uh, national championships for Vic Metro. But he'll certainly have some games in their VFL side. Faye starting a nice little run of play that will get the Australian team forward. And the handball over the top, and here's the inclusion in Lockie Rankin banging it long to the goal square, looking for a mark out the back. It's off hands but into the arms of Van Ruin, trying to get a handball away, but he's turned it over. But they've put some good pressure on Ford to try and lock it in here. Constable will try and barge his way through a tackle, but he's stopped by both Callahan and Matt Roberts. And they'll get a ball up 40 out from goal. But, gee, love watching Faye coming off. Mm. You know, mm. you get that kick in, get the handball received, go again. Oh, he's a talented boy. He played. He was moved to the Gold Coast for a year last year, back at GWS, and yeah, I'm sure he'll attract a, a fair bit of interest early, early on in this year's draft. Had a chance for Erasmus, but they've turned it over. The Australian team, and Sammy Simpson has got it. Former Geelong Falcon gives a handball off to a teammate in Stevens and a kick to Darcy Fort. Talk about not going the conventional way into the AFL system. Kev Darcy Fort was a Geelong Falcon, yeah. and I think Werribee Footscray, and then. Went and played his trade, Central Districts, and finally got his opportunity at age 26. And he still looks like he's got the talent to play some further senior mm-hmm. footy too. He hasn't had a lot of luck with injury, but the times he has got up into the AFL team, he's acquitted himself pretty well. Big Darcy. Mm-hmm. Steph Ockenbohr, a Category B rookie from Ireland. To Quinton Narkle from Western Australia, back to the Irishman. And now Charlie Constable. Chance to send the Cats into attack. Oh, oh. Fly Gibkiss couldn't ha- complete the mark defensively, and Sapatolis at the front of the pack oh. might have dribbled through a goal. What a good bit of roving from the big fella. Paul Sapatolis, although we're getting a discussion between the goal and field umpire, and now the boundary umpire is being called in. And But, gee, the Cats would have liked what they just saw there from Sapatolis off the deck. Mm. He's another one, isn't he? He just keeps getting him better the more he plays. So he's showing some really good signs for the Cats going forward. And they do take a while, the big boys. So I'm sure uh, he'll, he'll, he'll have a couple of years down here. And just seeing against Mac Andrews, the first time in this year's draft that the first round of the NGA boys um, can be... You don't have to bid on them. So it's going to be a really interesting watch this year for some of those NGA boys coming through. And before you know it, it's quarter time. Geelong 4-5-29, the AFL Academy... One, two, eight. So, Steve, from here, do you just go and take a seat and watch a bit more? In- oh, I suppose you've been watching intently here, but you're probably unencumbered by Kevin and I talking to you. Get to really drill down on on these young boys. And that's one of the great positives about being up here. It's a terrific view from up here in the uh, in the in in the media area. So, now I really look forward to sitting down and watching the last three quarters. And uh, I think they're just starting to find their feet. Hopefully, the academy boys. So, we look forward to seeing them. And as, as a club, as the Lions, how would you sum this up? Do you actually get together as a group of people that watched it directly and compare notes in the next number of days? How do you sum it up? Yeah, we've got some staff, as you mentioned before, Shifter, we've got staff sort of allocated players to watch, so they'll do that a little bit specifically live. Then we'll go back and watch the game in its entirety and and as a bit of a round a round table discussion followed up with some vision and some real... We've got some areas that I think, King, you mentioned before about... Uh, draft boards and you start to get some some profile on players so you're really starting to be a little bit more specific as it starts to unfold now so individual players are looking at some specific areas some growth areas for them their weapons and we're really big what Kevin said before on what are their weapons let's bring them in and but you have to and we just have a little bit of a look at their growth areas too so if you do draft them and the handovers there you, you sort of there's always what area are they going to grow and what's their greatest area of development for our development coaches that do a fantastic job at our footy clubs. So, yeah, this is a start of a process that will lead into the mid-season and then obviously to national championships at the end of the year. So it's a really long year for the lads and um, yeah, you don't want to you don't you don't want to over scrutinise them because you can. But you're, you're really looking at their weapons and what they can bring to the footy club. And gee, there's some talented boys out there that you have some nice traits to bring onto AFL this where, where, wherever they end up. Well. Well, Chris Fagan, you know, in a down moment, maybe grab a quarter of vision and have a look at this and give his thoughts. I super with that sort of stuff, Fags, yes. I think, 
It'll be interesting. It'll be a heck of a busy end of season with the way it's all sort of flying. But no, he, he likes to watch a bit of the kids and get to know them prior to the draft. Uh, he always has an interest in it. He's great to work with. Uh, he's super with the young lads. So, yeah, we've got a few of the coaches that we work with, and he sort of heads that up, obviously. But he's really hands-on with that sort of area of the club. And terrific with the kids, ter- terrific with the family. So he really buys in, and his, his work ethic is quite amazing, really. Yep. So you talked about potentially going to Perth for that super round, but I suspect it's in the, the lap of the guys <laughs> at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, so we do some club visits. So the, the, the SNFL fixturing is quite outstanding for us. Like it's, it's busy, but they spread their games on. So chance to visit some sample clubs this week and watch three three days of sample footy, oh, wow. Friday, Saturday and Sunday next weekend. Then the plan was to follow it up with Perth the next weekend. Um, and then from then on, you can be quite specific and target where you want to attend. So you don't, you know, you've just got to plan accordingly for the draft you know you, you may end up with picks with live trading on draft night you may have all your picks at the start of the draft and by and by the early part of draft night you might be down the back so you've really got to plan and cover all areas now it's um it's very fluid the, the lead into the draft and the draft night itself well steve we really appreciate you giving us some of your time best of luck for season 20 21, but your grand final is still about seven months away. They haven't set a draft for the NAB AFL draft yet, but it'll probably be late November, back to where it was previously. Obviously, we were a little bit later last year, but uh, we, it's always a, a very intriguing night. And uh, I'm speaking to some recruiters, they, their grand final, I suspect. Is that how you treat it? Yeah, no, it's a, it's a, it really is. It's a culmination of a, of a lot of work, probably for most of the kids in the draft for three years for us, really following them and it's just such an exciting night for the kids, like their kids, their family, their friends. It's, it's, it's a super night for everyone involved, and you always look forward to that time of the year. And do you know what? Like, unlike other grand finals, you don't lose. You always win. <laughs> you don't walk away going, we've lost. Everyone's a winner. You can't believe they slipped to that end of the draft. There's usually a bit of that, isn't there, <laughs> the time. But, no, it's always, it's, it's, it's an exciting time, and, yeah, I wish all the boys all the best. It's a big year with footy and school and exams, so... They've got, they've got a bit to get through, but it's amazing how durable the boys are and the programs that they have. The state league clubs run such a terrific program that um, I'm sure that we'll see lots of these boys get through at the end of the year. Steve, great to catch up with you. Good luck for the year. Yeah, thanks, guys. Good, good, good luck with the last three quarters. Steve Canole, thanks, the Steve. Brisbane Lions recruiting manager, good enough to join us as part of our live stream of the Geelong Cats Australia. Of course, the NAB AFL Academy taking on the Cats here at GMHBA Stadium. Live stream through afl.com.au. Tom King and Kevin Sheen will stay with you. We're about to be joined by, well, a man who uh, won a set, Sandhurst finest, isn't he? He is one of the, the finest you, from yeah, Sandhurst. Would you want a Sandhurst finest as well? <laughs> oh, We're just, all very biased. We just only run Sandhurst here, don't we? Uh, the mighty Sandhurst Dragons. It's, um, it's always good at the early part of the NAB League, NAB League year to get back to the beautiful QEO and, uh, <laughs> and catch up with a few Sandhurst um, locals. So... But uh, firmly focused now on uh, on these young boys, Kingy, and uh, they, I thought they've done a great job to start the uh, to start the game against a pretty experienced Geelong VFL lineup. Absolutely, good to see you, Troy. Troy Selwood joining us from the Geelong recruiting department, and talk to us, Troy. We spoke to Steve. What are you looking for today? And I, I suspect is your focus is on, on the Australian team, but you know, I'm guessing Chris Scott's saying to you, we'll have a look at how some of our VFL listed boys are going. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll obviously uh, review this game a number of times over the next couple of weeks via the vision as well to, to make sure we don't miss a thing. But, um, yeah, it's been really good to see these young um, these young boys come out and play against men, a lot of them for the very first time. And um, and I thought quite to start the game, a couple of our VFL boys have shown a bit. Obviously, Jordan Johnson up mm-hmm. front, um, Lockie Smith is a uh, is a player that we know quite well. That um, obviously you would know him too, Kingy, through the Geelong circles, who's a really talented young forward, um, and a couple of these nineteen year old uh, boys in the NAB League in uh, in Marcus Herbert and uh, Charlie Ham have also got their hands on the football. So um, yeah, it's it's exciting. There's plenty of players to be watching for both teams. I've been excited by Josh Fay through that first quarter. It was at the consensus with the other recruiters you've been sitting with that he's got his hands on the footy. And I suspect the champion data stats will reflect that as well. He's a nice he's a nice player, Josh, um, and uh, looks quite versatile player. Uh, through the back half, I, I think you could push him up to the wing, but just the penetration of his kick. He reminds me a bit of a, uh, a Kane Farrell type who played in this mm-hmm. game a few years ago um, with the ability to have such depth in his kick. But... Um, yeah, he looks like a nice prospect for the GWS Giants. Kevin, you've got access to those Looking numbers. Look at his stats, yes. He certainly had his hands on the ball quite a bit um, 
He's up to uh, yeah, eight disposals, Faye, in that uh, first quarter. For many of these boys, the, the last time I've seen them, and Josh Faye, yep. uh, Ozzy Harris, they were playing for their states at under-16 mm. level. Uh, he was... He was one of the best players for New South Wales ACT back then as a young boy. Uh, Harris won the most valuable player for Queensland in that championship. Uh, Faye, I was lucky, to, I mentioned it earlier, lucky enough to see him in one practice match <laughs> this year. We showed that elite kick. Yeah. But, yeah, he's had a terrific quarter and looks versatile enough to play yeah, wing or back and use that, uh, that wonderful weapon of that uh, booming kick. So we've got the bounce back in the middle to start the second quarter and the Cats are going to come up with it. But good pressure from... Jason Horn there, just affected the kick, the mark dropped by Austin Harris, we were just talking about, the ball be tracked to the boundary line by McLaughlin for the Cats, but it's out of bounds, and we'll get a boundary throw in. Troy, it's been a uh, intriguing 12 months that we've had, talk to us about the impact for the Geelong recruiting setup, with, in terms of your inability to travel last year, even though WA and, and South Australian football continue to be played, uh, obviously the lack of NAB League and lack of VFL last year, has it made the, the job of a recruiter, uh, you almost have to go to Brian Cook and say, can you add an extra zero for the, uh, <laughs> the, for the work we've had to do? Unfortunately, the budgets have come down rather than <laughs> up, Kingy, but um, it really has, uh, I guess, asked us to do our work in a different way, like many other industries across the, uh, across the world. But, um, yeah, look, it was a matter of uh, a lot of vision work, a lot of collating of information via um, phone calls, Zoom conversations, um, we uh, we really we really restructured a lot of the things we were doing and streamlined a lot of things and it it's got us thinking about the way to do our job moving forward into the future. So that actually has brought a little bit of excitement and watching some of the boys that we brought in um, last year, I think they're doing a great job. So it sort of says that you can do your jobs in different ways and um, and still get the outcomes you're looking for. One thing that changed, and I know Geelong loved to do, was you loved the home visits. Yep. Do you think you'll ever get back to being able to do that? Well, yeah, I think it's a case-by-case -case situation, to be honest. I think uh, I found, and I'm not sure what other recruiters have thought, but a lot of the Zoom conversations we had, the boys were very comfortable in that environment as well. Um, so there'll be an element of streamlining some of those interviews via uh, video conferencing, but at the same time, I think for a case-by-case -case situation, you might need to get back into some of the boys' homes and meet the family and the people that surround the, the players. Um, but, uh, but definitely, I think it'll be done in a different way to what it was in the past. Just saw Pat, Paul Sapatolis there, just put some pressure on Rip Bazzo. And some nice work earlier. You just missed the goal with a nice pick-up off the deck. Can you just give us the reasoning behind Paul Sapatolis going back and playing with the Western Jets in the NAB League? Yeah, so probably just due to his background of um, of not playing any football at all, Kingy, since he was uh, 14 or 15. He's, he's obviously the, quite uh, he's a similar age to these young AFL Academy boys. And, he's, um, and we just think this is probably the NAB League at the moment is where... He needs to be to, de to develop at his best. So he's spending big minutes with the Western Jets. They've been terrific with assisting us with his development. And over the first three to four weeks of the NAB League, he's really shown improvement week on week and um, competing well against some of these boys. Toby Conway, Ned Moyle, he came up against mm -hmm. last week. And um, we think it's heading in the right direction. It's still He's still at, uh, I guess, ground zero of his AFL career. But... Um, but we're very happy with the, uh, his first three to four weeks in the NAB League, and that will continue beyond um, beyond the competition recess period. Yeah. What have you seen in Paul Sapatolis prior to getting him to Geelong that you thought that he's got the attributes to make it? Well, number one was his terrific attitude and his commitment to uh, to be the best he can be, mate. Um, he uh, he showed great dedication during the COVID period to put his best foot forward to, to give himself a chance to be on an AFL list. Um, but we obviously love the size and shape of him. Um, we think he's obviously going to be a niche player and play a role in the ruck and up forward. Um, and we also think that his basketball attributes in terms of his soft hands in the ruck will really help our midfield group. So, um, yeah, he's got a lot of areas to improve um, still and obviously transitioning some fitness from basketball to football um, will take a period of time. But, um, but we're, we're ready to be there every step of the way. So from the boundary throw-in where Moyle did the ruck work, we've got a stoppage and actually a free kick, one for holding the ball, and it's Horn that's going to take the free kick at right half-back. The vice-captain of Australia has got the footy. Shocker blonde hair, you can't miss him. Almost uh, Craig Turley-like with that hair, if I want to go back. <laughs> Narkel, and he just steps inside Rankin and then kicks inside 50 and DeConning, who, of course, Sam DeConning was an under-18 All-Australian, Kevin... In 2019, out of the Dandenong Stingrays program, down from uh, up from Mornington. 
he one that uh, got a chance last week in the AFL. Yeah, and he looked quite at home out there. Showed some uh, some great moments. Uh, I'm going to make the point about growth and development. The first time we saw him was at the under-16s when this boy was 186 centimetres. So uh, amazing things can happen over a three or four year period with the growth of some young men and, and he'll continue to develop his football over the next two or three years. So it is a journey. It's not something that happens instantly for, for all boys because of that uh, the growth spurt type factor. But I still think he, he shows every bit of promise to be a potential player for the Cats down the track. Geelong holding a 22-point lead over Australia as the kick comes to half back and a Ooh, nice mark by Moyle flies and gives a handball off to Erasmus. And the West Australian goes with the outside of the right boot and just kicks it into space to his fellow Sandgroper and Jacob Van Royen, but he's unable to run onto the footy. And the ball's at half back and the Cats will clean up with Max Holmes, a first-round draft pick of the Cats. You traded up for Max Holmes, I think did a deal with... Gold Coast? Uh, it was Richmond, Richmond. We, um, we did a deal for. And, and Max has had a terrific start to his career at the Cats. He's, um, we, we really liked Max's um, athleticism, obviously coming from a high, uh, highly credentialed family, but uh, he's got some great football um, talent to go with that speed and power that he brings to the game. And, uh, yeah, we've really, he's been terrific in the VFL to start the year. He got his, uh, he got his um, AFL debut against Hawthorne on Easter Monday, and, um, and I thought he showed some great signs in that first quarter as well, showing his, uh, his athletic traits. My years of dealing with Stephen Wells, we, there's some Falcons out there, and, of course, Toby Conway is one, and his line used to be, if there are two boys who are on the same level, we'll take the Falcon. Are you looking closely at Toby Conway? Yeah, Kingy, look, I, I think it's hard to miss Toby, especially with his start to the year. He's, um, he's really um, taken taken great steps in his football since under 16s um he's been one of the form ruckmen in the nab league competition um to start the year and just his uh his growth in a player in terms of his ruck craft and then his athleticism to get around the ground has um has really i guess caught our attention and i'm sure the attention of all other um 17 afl clubs you wish you could hide some of these geelong boys away don't you it's a bit hard to these days. <laughs> no, they, they, uh, and also that's tampering with the draft. <laughs> um, but, uh, no. So we're listing in here. That's we're right, I've got in. Kevin Sheehan hanging over my shoulder here. Yeah. But, um, but it is great. We, we obviously are very proud of um, our community and, and think there's a lot of football talent both in the Falcons and through our VFL programs and the local clubs. And, um, and it's great to see them get opportunities at the next level. Sammy Simpson just sprays that one. To the right, good to see Sam Simpson back playing some footy. Who follow the AFL closely has been out firstly with a shoulder issue from the grand final last year when Sam Menegola went back where Angels feared to tread, and Sammy unfortunately was collateral damage. Yeah, really, really uh, big injury that one. So it took uh, all of uh, all of the summer to get that one right and to rehab it. But um, he's done a terrific job, um, and uh, as as we saw in the AFL last year, he, when he comes in and can play a, a range of roles for us across half forward and through the midfield. So I'm sure Chris Scott and the team will be looking forward to uh, mm. getting some miles under his legs. Here's De Conning again. So what's De Conning now? As you see, he was 186, about 198 now. Or is he even top the 200? Yeah, no, he's, he's over the uh, magic 200 oh, wow. figure there, Kingy. Uh, what happened oh, to us? I know. Well, it, as, as Kev said... It, in his draft year, I think every time I caught up with him, I reckon he'd grown another three centimetres. It was incredible, his growth spurt. And, uh, and as you can see, he's fantastic at ground level as well as in the air. So uh, a, very, uh, a very versatile player for our coaching staff to work with. And, um, yeah, we're seeing him up forward, but we can't, re we can't forget that he was an All-Australian um, defender only a few years ago. And his brother, of course, Tom mm. at Carlton, is just, except for the injuries, look, he showed some fantastic footy in the last couple of years when he's been given a chance at senior level. Their father, of course, Terry, was a guy that played at the Western Bulldogs, mm. or Footscray back, uh, it would have been in the 80s, 90s, in that period there. Yep. Uh, from a very large family and a very devoted football family, they are the, the Connings. There's Fraser Maris getting a kick there. Of course, the very, very late call-up into the Australian side, uh, up from Warrnambool over Noel this morning to represent his country, which is fantastic for him. Mm. We talked about him in the first quarter. Chance here for oh. Callahan to run on it. He did well. He kept the ball in front of himself, but then went to ground wow. and flicked a handball that, unfortunately, Harris couldn't get a handle on. And Simpson will pick up the loose footy for the Cats and drive them for Johnson with a wonderful pick up on the half volley and release to Ockenbore and here's Sapatolis who's going to get a chance potentially to get onto the footy gives a handball off but well done getting back by Matty Johnson to 
clean up. He gives a handball off to Matty Roberts, and Roberts on the outside of the left boot finds the Queenslander in Austin Harris. Coming off a couple of goals, Austin Harris last week against the Bulldogs. Yeah, I was at BFL. that game, Key, and um, he did a good job. Austin uh, gets some great opportunities with the um, Gold Coast Suns VFL program um, early in the year, like a number of their academy kids, and Aussie's a, a player that we've uh, become familiar with since probably under-15s, under-16s, a, a really neat um, small winger defender originally, but now playing in a forward role. Under-16 All-Australian he was, as Luke Smith has a shot at goal and kicks his second of the morning. Yeah, so Austin Harris uh, from Cairns originally. Yeah, and Shifter probably knows a bit more um, about his story, but I believe the Gold Coast Suns moved him down to the Gold Coast a couple of years ago to um, to be more entrenched in their football programs. Um, but yeah, originally from Cairns, which is obviously a, still a, quite a hotbed of um, AFL talent too, Shifter. And his mum's from Thailand, so if he was to push through and play some AFL, well, I think he'd be the first, the first uh, player from Thailand, or Thailand heritage, put it that way, uh, to get through to AFL. And his dad was a cricketer. Uh, he only... Uh, told us about this the other day as we met all the boys. His dad played some state cricket for Tassie, opened the batting with David Boone in that era, and played some state cricket for Queensland as well. So amazing the backgrounds of these boys. You wouldn't have thought you'd find a kid in Cairns that uh, is a potential AFL player that, uh, that was a cricketer, come from a cricketing family. So amazing. And this boy, yeah, moved down at 15 to the Gold Coast to pursue uh, his dream, just as you have to out of the boar. I suppose uh, remote areas, not quite remote, but far away areas of, as Australia move into the, the capital cities where the high performance programs are on and, and the Gold Coast are looking after him very, very well down there with Andrew Rains in charge of their academy program and he has worked closely with Aussie uh, to develop his, uh, his skill set, as has Jared Harbrow, who is his mentor. He oh, plays wow. a lot like Harbrow, doesn't he? Uh, lefty, very a quick step through traffic and a dynamic uh, left foot kick. Turns 18 next Friday, does Ozzy Harris, so uh, a couple of 18-year-olds nearly upon us with Finn Callahan turning 18 on Monday. Cats have got the ball to half forward. Here's McLaughlin, who's been lively and now. Sapatolis, just a that's a nice little kick from Sapatolis. He assessed the situation well, got the vision forward, and found Max Holmes. Well, he's got the um, he he is has been obviously a footballer in the past, so he's got some neat skills for a big fella, Paul, and um, and. During COVID, I had a lot of kicks of the footy with him and was quite pleased with his foot skills, so it was good to see that he could, um, he could showcase them then. So it was a downfield 50-metre penalty being paid. I reckon Mac Andrew might have got himself in a tangle with yeah, Sam DeConning. Yeah, he pulled, pulled the jumper, no doubt. I had my eye on that at the time. Uh, DeConning about to lead, and Mac Andrews just, uh, as they tend to do occasionally, just the reflex was to grab the jumper rather than just try and uh, trail him on that quick lead. So Geelong now 6 8, 44, Australia 1 2 8. Hope you're enjoying the live stream through afl.com.au. Tom King, AFL talent ambassador, Kevin Sheehan, and Geelong recruiter, Troy Sell. What's your official title, Sell? It's a lengthy one, isn't it? Oh, no, it's just talent ID manager. So um, it's, uh, I guess it runs across, uh, yeah, to support Stephen Wells and obviously uh, Simon Lloyd in the, um, in the recruiting and the more, more so down the recruiting path. Um, lend a hand in list management where required, but. Um, um, yeah, with Wellesy looking after both recruiting and list management, it's, um, it sort of helps um, make sure that he can um, jump between both roles uh, uh, sufficiently. Tap down, one by the Cats. Narkel gives a handball off to Simpson, and the Cats will go inside forward 50 again, but getting across nicely and taking the mark is Rhett Bazo, the West Australian. Under 16, all Australian was Rhett. He's got it inside defensive 50. Read that well off the boot and cut across to take a good grab. Kick to half back looking for Moyle. He'll get himself a free kick as Fort just tugged on the jumper and a chance to build from half back. Now, Austin Harris just thought that once the ball was thrown back, he could take off with it. <laughs> Unfortunately for Australia, that's not the case. And well, they are trying to open up the game these days, King, aren't they? But uh, I think he might have been yeah, pushing the banjo there. <laughs> Moyle at right half back. Looking out there for a marking option and Erasmus, who kicked four in the Waffle Colts Grand Final last year for Subiaco, has got the footy. Don't have too many Neils playing AFL footy. Be great to have. Well, I don't think we've got any at the moment. Kick towards half forward. No mark from Conway as the Cats look to clear. A little kick on the outside of the right boot. Looking for McLaughlin was fisted away by Big Moyle and out of bounds. What do you like about Ned Moyle? Sells. Yeah, so Ned's um, Ned's a player that uh, 
obviously missed the draft last year as an as an eighteen year old, probably just through a lack of exposure. To be honest, Kingy, he was uh, he was a slow burn as a as a developing ruckman, and what he's obviously done over that COVID period and into his um, twenty twenty one pre season is really work hard on his game um, and and his athleticism and. And he's been terrific with the way he started the year um, at the NAB League level. He's big, he's strong, he, um, he gives his midfielders first use. He's still got areas of his game that he's continuing to work on with run and ground coverage, but um, he's giving himself a great chance to potentially be picked up in the mid-season draft. Austin Harris taking a nice mark down low, and he wants to bring it inboard with a well-weighted kick to his skip up, and it's Dacos with the footy. He wants to just push off and run, and he does, and it's Maris, the very late inclusion from... South Warnable. He goes to Callahan. Callahan handball off, and here's Faye. We haven't seen a lot of him in this second quarter as he drives it inside 50, going with the one hand, but not marking was Rankin. Chance now for Australia to handball up. Finds Rochelle. His kick was partially smothered. Cooper Hamilton head over the footy. But they're going to turn it over here, unfortunately. Now, you're both Bendigo boys, gentlemen. Cooper Hamilton is at Caulfield Grammar, but I don't think there's been too many draftees from Colburn Abbott over the journey of VFL AFL football. Now, it's probably about the Heathcote League, is it, uh, it is. Troy? It is. Shifted the mighty uh, Colburn Abbott and Grasshoppers, Hoppers, they yes. are. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah no, they're a very strong uh, team up there in the Heathcote District Footy League. They had a, a great full forward um, there called Grant Weeks, mm. who kicked uh, yeah, did. bags yeah. of goals both in the Heathcote District and the Bendigo Football League. He, I think he was the same year as my, uh, my younger brother, Joel, but has just recently retired. But, uh, no, there hasn't been too many out of Colbo. <laughs> so hopefully the Hamilton boys will be the first in a long time. So twin brother Hugh? Yes, yeah, so twin Hugh's brother. his twin brother, yeah. And also attends Caulfield Grammar and plays well, uh, plays for the Bendigo Pioneers. So we're seeing a lot of the Hamilton boys at the moment. Erasmus has got the footy with the man on the mark standing about 45 from goal, 45 degree angle and a chance for Erasmus. And what I know of him, this isn't beyond him distance-wise. No, he's a, he's a goal kicker, mate, and he's had a terrific start to the Waffle Colt season for Subiaco. He's, uh, he's moved himself up into the midfield over the first month of the year, but um, still knows where the goals are, as we, as we found out in the Waffle Colts grand final last year. Won't have the carry this time on the kick and the mark comfortably taken by Ollie Tate, who is one of the older cats out there today, former Williamstown VFL player who has found himself on Geelong's VFL list while playing locally in the Geelong League with Leopold. Well, kick to half back oh, yeah. looking out there for Nick Burke. It's a good grab taken there by Erasmus again. Mm. So showing some good signs, Neil Erasmus, in this last three or four minutes. He'll kick to the hot spot. It's off hands. He's been looking for the fly from Van Roy. And well done by Conway. Gave a handball off. Quick snap out of the pack. Dacos has got a little bit too much pull on the kick and has missed to the right through for a behind in Australia now. Uh, one at 3 9. Geelong 6 8 44 in this. Flash at GMHBA Stadium. It's gone 17 and a quarter minutes in the second quarter. Hope you're enjoying it through afl.com.au. Tom King and AFL Talent Ambassador Kevin Sheen bring you the action. And Troy Selwood, Geelong Talent ID Manager, our special guest. Erasmus claimed the mark there, but it wasn't paid, and he's now taken in a Max Holmes tackle. And that's, and one, of his, that's one of his attributes, King, is his overhead marking Erasmus. He... Uh He's shown that at uh, PSA level, at private school level um, for Hale School um, last year as well, where he kicked a number of goals from his, uh, I guess, from his contested and overhead marking in the forward 50. Horn mm. under pressure, and the good mark taken there by Cooper Hamilton, who we were just talking about from Coleman mm. Avenue. Wants to step through the man coming towards him, went to ground, then got a handball on the bounce, but numbers are there. Wanganeen gave it off, Gibkiss, kick on the bounce. Well done by Rankin, did well, good pick up, and then a handball release to Maris. Maris has kicked to the pocket just on the bounce, taken out there by Blake Howes, but he's got pressure that comes from Ockenbore, and it's out of bounds, boundary throwing. So just that last kick in from Fraser Maris, unfortunately not hitting Blake Howes, but other than that, some good signs from some of the boys there. Yeah, some really clean work there from Lockie Rankin, who's done a good job to start the year across half forward for the Oakley Chargers, and he's a really clean player. He likes to put energy on the game, Lockie, and... Um, and he had to be clean at ground level there, and he, and he really was. Van Royen to do the ruck work against Nick Stevens. That's an unlikely ruck matchup. Van Royen handballed Dacos. Dacos tried to release on to, look like Rochelle, he tried to get it to. But there's going to be a free kick, and it's going to come back to the skipper of Australia in Dacos with a man on the mark, 40 from goal. He's trying to buy every metre here mm. from the umpire is Nick Dacos. Mm. He'd look good in cat's colours, I reckon, uh, in Nick Dacos. <laughs> but uh, we're going to have our work cut out for us. I, yeah, it would be great. <laughs> so he's leading the goal-kicking in the NAB League through the first three rounds, mm. Nick Dacos, with eight majors. 
son of Peter, of course, played 250 games for Collingwood, was an absolute superstar through the late 70s, 80s and early 90s. Kick to the goal square is off hands and through for a ball. That's why he's interested in that other metre that he's trying to get. He knows <laughs> the distance he can kick, just <laughs> failed by uh, half a metre probably on that occasion. But always been impressive. Ske- always scheming the day costers to get a goal. Can't blame them. Cats will look to open up play on the Hickey Stand side or the Maroubal Street side of the ground for those who are looking at geography of where GMHBA Stadium sits in the Geelong landscape. That's a good defensive punch there from Josh Fay, boy from Queanbeyan, and of course part of the Giants Academy. And he's also receiving some opportunities at VFL level two at the moment, Kingy, through the GWS yep. Giants yep. Um, program. So it's great to see Josh uh, be playing up against men and he looks at home and just on that occasion, just how proactive he was with his starting point and then to yep. come back and cut the space and effectively spoil over the line. He's one to keep an eye on. He's been impressive through this first half of play. Conway doing the ruck work for Australia, but only when he down as far as Constable. He gave it to Simpson. Chance to build here. The Cats knuckle. Long ball inside. Ford, 50. Looking for mm. Ford, who in a one-on-one against Bazo, just a little bit too tall. Probably conceding a little bit of height there. Rhett Bazo. Ford coming in at 205 and Bazo at 195. So there's a good four inches in the old. That's it, right. And look, and Rhett's obviously giving away a bit of size, shape and experience at the moment. And interesting enough, interestingly enough, he, uh, Rhett's been playing as a forward for the Swan District's Colts, so he's sort of just been flipped into defence. Uh, this will be his first week in a little while, so might just be a little bit rusty with some of his starting points and defensive craft. Darcy Fort from 20 metres out makes no mistake. So Fort hoping to press his claims. That I'm not sure whether uh, Chris Scott when he gets to selections, probably taking too much out of... Well, it's just a blowout, I suspect, for the Geelong boys and just gets him some continuity because of the fact they played round one last week and then were given the bye in round two. Well, it's a unique uh, situation for our boys. They obviously want to keep playing football and uh, press their press their case, keep some, uh, keep some run under their legs, but it's a great opportunity for them too to... Um, to yeah, get some, build some confidence, um, and uh, who knows how the game unfolds later this afternoon. Some of these boys might be required over the coming weeks at AFL level. So Darcy Fort with the goal, and the margin is 40. Geelong 7-8-50, Australia 1-4-10 as we approach half-time here at GMHBA Stadium. Hope you're enjoying the stream through afl.com.au of the Australia versus Geelong VFL clash. Wonderful pick-up by Constable who... Gives it to Ockenbohr, bursting off half back, tries to shrug off the tackle of Rochelle. He was able to get a handball again. Rochelle went again and laid another good tackle. So good work there from the Shepherd and Swans product. Of course, Shepherd and Swans, the former Lemnos in the Golden Valley League, who knows who know their footy in that neck of the woods. Provided a few AFL players over the journey. And one of our most favourite umpires over the journey came from Lemnos. Kevin Sheen, Glenn James. Glenn James, I thought you'd say that, lives out in my area. I see Glenn at the coffee shop from time to time. Now yeah, living in around the Templestow era, Doncaster area of Melbourne. A great umpire, great sense of humour, great decision maker, yep. terrific athlete. He used to love how at grand final day when he would control them, the siren would go and he would actually wave <laughs> to the cameras and then get the game underway. Yeah. He was uh, one of the finest uh, controllers of the game of the 1980s. He Australian team try to clear from half back. Diving on the footy is Roberts. Can't miss him with that shock of red hair. But now he's going to be pinged for holding the ball after diving on it. Wasn't able to move it on. And now he finds himself in a bit of a push and shove with Darcy Fort. We approach half time in this clash. How, how many times will you go back and watch the vision of this, Troy, post game? Oh, Kingy, as the year goes on, we'll uh, probably, yeah, be countless amount of times um, to, to review the boys and, and just go back to probably where they were at this stage of the year and they'll obviously continue to develop as the year goes on. Some of these boys will probably get opportunities to go and play against men at Sample and Waffle level and even maybe some of the Victorian boys um, in the VFL. So it's good just to see them, I guess, at the start of the year come up against some big bodies um, look, we're not expecting them to come away and win the game today, but uh, 
there'll be some standout um, moments and some standout performances out of today and, and definitely be a big part in our decision-making come November. Roberts wanted Williams with the kick, but unfortunately cut off, and then the Cats get a flying shot at goal through Narkle, who has missed to the right, and it's through for a behind, and the margin is 41, with less than a minute to play in this second quarter. And just uh, emphasising, I suppose, or re-emphasising the fact that these boys have just come in the other day. It's not the normal program. It's normally a year-long program where you've got three or four camps here developing not only your game plans, but working on your fundamentals, becoming f- familiar with your teammates. They haven't had that chance, but obviously the AFL was... V- Really keen to get the program started again, at least get something up and running and bring the best in together. Uh, and so, yes, they are underdone in terms of uh, the knowledge on each other. And then some injuries, as we mentioned at the start, to critical players had an impact. But it, it doesn't take anything away from the fact that uh, we want to really ensure that the best boys in Australia are given every opportunity to show their, their talents. And what a moment that was. Nice mark from Jason Horn climbing high there. He landed a little bit awkwardly. He's ba- has bounced to his feet. He's yeah. got the uh, Rory Sloan slash David Mundy look, doesn't he? Uh, <laughs> and and that, look, that's, a, that's about the spot David Mundy had that shot a few years ago too. It was on that half forward flank, I reckon. It was, but uh, Jason Horn. Uh, I'm not sure whether Kev's mentioned him much in the first quarter, but yeah, he's a pretty special player, mate. He's playing uh, Sanford League football. Um, and doing an incredible job uh, for the Panthers, who sit mm. atop of the ladder, I think, at the yes. moment, and uh, has been instrumental with their start to the season, and we saw a little bit of him at league level last year at under-17s too. I think the Rory Sloan uh, comparison's a good one. Uh, traits-like, we love to use that in, in scouting terms. Has he got some traits-like? Well, he's got some traits of the Rory Sloan. Uh, he's a competitive beast, that boy, too. He just loves the contests. He's very good at the clearances, whether it's centre bounce or around the ground and would love what he's done in the last, uh, well, in his 16th, 17th, and now the start of his 18th year, the last three years as he prepares for an AFL career. Wearing number nine as well? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. He's actually got some uh, some great influences in his life. I think his stepdad is Fabian Francis, who was um, from uh, the Port Adelaide Power and has been a, uh, a great mentor for him over his teenage years. So he's got some great people in his corner. I know his coach, Jared Wright, who I played with at... Um, at the Brisbane Lions, and, and they can't speak more highly of uh, Jason and the way he goes about his football. So we'll take a break. It's half time. Geelong 7 10 52, the Australian AFL Academy team 1 4 10. That will be me done. My half is done. Jason Doherty is going to replace me. AFL talent ambassador Kevin Sheen is going to stay on with you, and so is Troy Selwood for another quarter. Geelong AFL talent ID manager. But at this stage, it's a 42 point lead for the Cats. Hope you're enjoying it through afl.com.au. We'll take a quick break and be back shortly with the second half from GMHBA Stadium.
Welcome back to GMHBA Stadium, second half of the game between the Australian AFL Academy and the Geelong VFL team. It is 7-10-52, Geelong lead the Academy 1-4-10 at halftime. Thanks to Tom King for his efforts in the first half. Jason Doherty with you here at GMHBA today. Great to have Kevin Sheehan in support as always and Troy Selwood, Geelong Talent ID manager with us as well for this third term. And Kevin, what would uh, Tark and Lockie have said to the boys at uh, three quarter, at half time for the third quarter? Do you think? I think one of the things you would have said, what do you think, boys? How have you mm. coped with that? Uh, have you found the pace of the game quicker? What have we learnt from it? I think you'd be engaging with them. Um, you want them to c- keep communicating with each other, very importantly, keep uh, building the relationships that you've developed now for about an hour or so, remembering that, of course, they've only just come, come in a couple of d- days ago. So let's learn on the job. Let's get better. Let's keep competing hard, and uh, uh, let's keep at this particular Geelong side. <laughs> uh, the aim, of course, is to go home with your, your seven or eight learnings out of it. Uh, it's a development program, uh, the, uh, the NAB AFL Academy, and... Uh, as we'd mentioned, normally he would have had the chance, Tarkin, to uh, to have them in camp. He's had Zoom meetings because of COVID. All that's been <laughs> is Zoom meetings over a period of time leading up to them coming in on Wednesday. So, uh, yeah, he would have had a chance to review it. He's got his line coaches, of course, there that uh, would be working with the boys as well. And, uh, yeah, I think feedback from the boys is a good way to go. And then he'd give them some direction on sticking to the game plan that they talked about prior to the game. And Troy, this is probably recruiting Shangri-La, really, isn't it? To have you know the the best talent available at the one spot that you said uh, in the break that there was obviously all the recruiting and list managers here today. So it's a great opportunity for them to have a, a first look at them in in this sort of environment against the VFL. No, absolutely, Jace. It's a, it's a fixture that we love seeing penciled into our schedules. Um, obviously, last year we we couldn't get it done, but I think the AFL shifter and the team have done a terrific job to to make this happen. Um, yep, it's had to be a little bit modified this year without the with the lack of camps and so forth. That does help gel the team, but um, but I think that these boys in the AFL Academy have done a great job. They've settled into the match. Obviously, the first quarter was um, was a bit tough for them, um, but as Shifter said, I think what what we want to see from them in this second half is just commit to some real fundamental things um, in regards to looking after your teammates, making sure that they put their head over the footy, that that they're strong over the ball, that they're getting over and supporting their teammates and trying to link up. They've got the skill. They've got the talent and the skill that we we all know. It's just um, probably now that they're used to or now have had uh, 50 minutes playing against bigger bodies, they can hopefully settle into the match and get a few more goals on the board. And you're saying too also with the Geelong team, some of the more experienced players out today. So it's good for the younger boys in the VFL team to play against yeah, uh, this, so we've this given cohort some, too. That's right. We've given some opportunities to, to some young VFL-listed kids to, to hopefully put their name up to the recruiters as well. They'll obviously be watching our VFL as well as the AFL. So um, guys like Jackson Thurlow, Darcy Lang, um, Aaron Black, um, Ryan Abbott have... have Stepped, or stepped aside for the week and given opportunities to some of our young 19, 20, 21 year old um, VFL listed talent that, and I think a fair few of them are doing a good job to start the game So just about ready for the start of the third term here at GMHBA as we said Geelong 7, 10, 52 the AFL Academy 1, 4, 10 umpire has the ball in hand Toby Conway who is a local boy Vic Country from Geelong College I had to give Geelong College a shout out and uh, up against Darcy Fort to start the third term in the middle. Beautiful, glorious day for footy here in Geelong this morning. And Conway goes up early, but Fort gets it down. And there is Horn on the outside there. It's a high tackle, and it's going to be a free kick. The academy is going to go quickly, and they're going to go through Jace Burgoyne, who goes towards centre-half forward. And Horn's over it. He loses the football, though, and Simpson gives it away. The umpire says advantage. They play through the middle. Radigalia's got it. He's got Narkel on his outside. Might go there now. He does. He's at half forward. Goes inside 50. And off the back of the pack, OK. Gibkiss. He goes wide. Goes around the corner. He tries to find Nick Dacos. He can't take it, though. And the Cats with the numbers at the back. Narkel right on 50. Little bit of candy. Sold it right. Then went left. Got away. Then fell over. <laughs> shuffled the handball inboard. And they just get the kick away through Constable towards DeConning. Great little pick up. Tried to get the footy out quickly towards Luke Smith. Still in the field of play. Is that high? The umpire says. Yes, it is. And it will be a free kick to Geelong. He's a crafty little forward pocket, uh, pocket is Luke Smith. Um, just the guy who tackled him, Josh Gibkiss, is a, uh, is a key defender from GWV Rebels. Um, comes, comes from uh, some good stock. He's virtually orig- originally from Brisbane, but Josh Gibkiss has had a terrific start to the NAB League season. Jace, he's a very athletic, versatile player. 
um, marks the ball incredibly well and great skills. So looking forward to seeing Josh in the second half. Great kick around the corner too there came from uh, Luke Smith. So he puts a goal on the board. And that is by Tom King's reckoning his third this afternoon. And that is the eighth for Geelong. They go to 8 10, 58. They lead the Academy 1 4 10. And we've played a minute and a half in this third term. Yeah. Luke, Luke came down from Shepparton a couple of years ago. To uh, He was a very good player for the Shepparton Bears and I think won a GV medal, uh, premiership medal with them. Um, and uh, he's come down to Geelong to, to play at a higher level and um, has played a lot of VFL football for our team over the last couple of years and also plays some football at Bell Park when uh, we're not in the VFL. And one of the lessons for the Australian boys at the moment will be uh, the tricks of the trade of some of the stronger bodies. And Quinton Narkel's been noticeable in this, the first half of the start of this third quarter with his, his uh, Dusty Martin Wardoffs, if you like. <laughs> He'll put out the don't argue, and the boys have been unable to hang on to him. So they'll learn quickly. You've got to get lower and harder, get right in around their hips and look out for that big Wardoff. Back in the middle, Fort gets it down past Constable. Horn just falls over at the crucial stage for him. Constable gets it around to Narkel. As Kevin said, there he is. He just... Works it back in, board to Fort. The big fella just stands there. Standing to mark Erasmus for the academy. Now through the middle, they get the ball through Ollie Tate. And back to Narkel. He goes with a scrubby sort of kick towards centre Ford Might be OK for Smith again. Again, tried to get the kick away. Close to the uh, 10 metre square. Cats with the numbers at the back. And pushed the pass there was O'Loughlin. Got back around. Kick around the corner. And again, a little bit too easy around the corner from for that to occur, and that is uh, Chalcraft. Chul- yeah, that's Joy Chalcraft, yep. who is another kid from uh, the Shepparton region. Actually, he's made his way down to uh, study at Deakin University, and he had a had a good career at the Murray Bush Rangers, uh, NAB League, a couple of years there, and he's actually got a younger brother, Cade, who's playing for the Murray Bush Rangers at the moment. But uh, Joy's been with us for a couple of years now, um, obviously a strong body, um, and uh, and is also playing good GFL football when not in the playing VFL. across the road. Just, he is, yeah, West Canadian at Samari. So, yeah, no, it was a good kick around the corner. A couple of, and as you said, Kev, there, just that the, the bigger body close to goal is um, just the academy needs to lay those tackles, don't they? Yeah, probably the weight difference yeah. would be uh, tw- uh, 10 or 12 kilos across the, each individual player. <laughs> Makes a difference, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, <laughs> between your, your 18th year and when you're 21 or 22 years of age. Geelong 19, 64, they lead the AFL Academy 1, 4, 10. Back to the middle. We've made, played uh, nearly four minutes in this third term. And. Darcy Fort, Toby Conway will do the ruck work. Conway goes up early. Fort gets it. Back of the pack. They might be able to run free now. They do. Sonzi goes inboard for the academy. Inside 50. Big pack there. Back of the pack. And good pressure. And was that high, said the umpire. It was. The tackle came there from Rochelle, and it was unfortunately too high. So the ball's going to come back quickly. And Nick Stevens is going to take the free kick in the last line of defence for Geelong. Plays on now. Wants to try and measure the pass. He missed the target to Charlie Ham. So they've got a, got an opportunity now, the academy. And they go quickly through Fay. Left foot kick long. He's missed it to the left-hand side. And through for one behind. So they go to one five eleven. the academy. Geelong 9-10-64. Uh, he's been really impressive, Josh Fay, uh, through the first half. And it looks like he might have been pushed up onto a wing to, uh, to start the second half here. Ball back in towards Simpson, who picks it up at the second opportunity. And the Cats can move it out wide and go OK now around the corner, Stevens. Short towards De Conning. Can't take the slips catch mark. Close to the boundary line again, Stevens. Gets it to Holmes, right on centre wing. Goes back towards half forward with the kick. And the push there came from Bazo at the back. The umpire said it's going to be a hold. And... I think they're going to take the free kick, and they are through Harris. Yeah, and Fay up to 16 disposals. The uh, it's gay, or it's team high for the the Australian side. Going nicely. Uh, six. He had the six uh, rebound fifties in that first half, and as Troy points out, now up on the wing, so his drive will be pretty important. They go from Rankin, and then they're out wide now. The academy, so just a little bit of possession football. They go longer, no mark taken, and the Cats off half back might be able to move the ball. Fort handballs it backwards. And they just work a bit of a triangle there. The Cats, they come backwards quickly. And that goes towards Ockenball. They're out across half back now. And they go towards uh, centre wing. Might turn the ball over, though. The uh, ball came quickly from Chalcraft. You get it back to Narkel. Just stands it and kicks it over the shoulder. High kick right into the middle of the ground. Numbers with the Academy. Conway runs past it, though. They need to pick it up. Simpson does as well. And over the top of it, Horn. The umpire says play on. He puts the tackle on now, Horn. The umpire will come in and we'll have a ball up. 
So six and a half played, third term. One five eleven, the AFL Academy, Geelong nine ten sixty four from the ruck contest. Horn puts on a good tackle. Umpire says Narkel had it too long, so they're going to be able to switch the ball back in board. It's okay, and right in the middle of GMHBA, they can move it quickly, and that comes through Rochelle. Goes inside fifty, no mark taken there by Moyle, and he follows it up though. The big fella does nicely and sees it over the boundary line there. So uh, Tarkin would be very happy with that effort for the big ba- big man across half forward. Yeah, he obviously hasn't spent a whole lot of time as a key forward or a deep forward, Jase. He spends a lot of his time in the ruck for the Oakley Chargers, so he presented well at the football, but Shannon Neal was able to get the fist in there. Just back to Shifter's point in the middle, it was good to see Jason Horn, I guess, learn from the uh, Quinton Narkle fend-offs and to be able to uh, get his body in tight, wrap him up and uh, win, the, win the free kick for holding the ball. Conway from the back pleads innocence for the push in the back that he, uh, the umpire said he gave away to Fort, so... They go short. Ockenball was that the, the uh, kick was too short, but they move it through the middle now to Cats. And they've turned it over, though. And Burgoyne gets back there and fills the hole nicely. And 50 as well. So the academy with an opportunity. And uh, Jace Burgoyne, of course, the son of Peter Burgoyne, uh, Indigenous Team of the Century, way back in 2005. Wonderful player at AFL level. And that makes Jace eligible uh, as a father son to the Port Adelaide Footy Club. He went to Harris by hand, and Harris's kick was unfortunately chopped off at the back for uh, the Cats, and uh, Fiore has taken the mark. He goes out wide, looking for Holmes. Has he run out of room? Yes, he has. And the Academy will take a free kick. Left half forward, once the ball comes back. And I think that might be Faye, is it out there? Who's got it? He goes short, it's okay. Shelley's had... A bit of the ball in the early stages of this third term as well. He's been playing well. So he's got the ball about 60 out from goal. Wants to go now. Drives it long towards the square. It's all Geelong though. Has he got it over the top? He has. There you go. Mm. He backed himself. He did nicely, Josh Shelley. He kicks his first and the second for the academy. They're 2 5 17. And they trail Geelong. 9-10-64, and we've played eight and a half in the third term. And they all have different backgrounds, no doubt about it, and they're all multi-talented there. Josh Rochelle was on a soccer pathway until about 15 years of age. He was uh, Melbourne Victory, heading towards maybe uh, a career in, in that field, but switched back, and we're glad he did to AFL, <laughs> and then won the medal at the Under-16 National Championships a couple of years he back. He did. It's got on my book here, the Kevin Sheen medal. Jeez, it was a very prestigious medal, <laughs> Kevin. No, that's great. It's no. good to get one back from... <laughs> well, back that's right. He had a big decision to make at 15, 16, which mm. some of these boys do as the dual sport, mm. talented sports kids. And, um, and geez, we are wrapped that he's playing because he's an he's a, uh, exciting talent, especially across half forward. He's, um, he's shown some of that for the Murray Bush Rangers over recent weeks. And, um, yeah, you want the ball in Rochelle's hands across half forward. Fort gets it down the middle, up against Moyle now as well. Constable got the handball out, and they're going to go wide, coming out towards Ham. Handballs it over the top, crowd the loose man over the top. They've done nicely, Geelong. They get it to Simpson now, 55 out. Doubles back on the right foot and drills it back inboard. And it was a good kick. And Moyle couldn't get back there in time. He's going to stand the mark. But the Cats are going to have a... Another shot for goal, and, and it is Jace, it looks Marcus like Mar- Herbert. Yeah, yeah, Marcus Herbert, who's an interesting story here. Marcus is actually a 19-year-old in the NAB League competition, plays with the GWV Rebels, um, and has had a really strong start to the year as well. He's, um, he's a kid who's obviously really um, keen to try and make his name in AFL football and to be drafted as an overager. And, um, and look, he's done a great job there to kick the goal, and, um, and we're excited to be able to give him this opportunity today to play in front of recruiters, and, um, and hopefully he might be a name that recruiters walk away from, as well as the AFL players in terms of wanting to follow up and, and watch a bit more of. Yeah. Kevin, it'll be interesting to see how the coaches for the AFL Academy use the footage, especially from a defensive perspective, how they're, how they're letting that happen and how, how they can fix that up as they go as a team. Yeah, and I think some of those uh, learnings might not even occur today. It might mm. be hard to yeah. change things around, but they will certainly cut up the vision of this game yeah. and give them feedback over time. Yep. Jason Devonport's one of those such coaches. Brad Johnson's working with Tarkin Lockyer. Um, we've got some... Uh, terrific people are giving them those insights. We want this to be ongoing learning for mm. them to set up the year. These boys will play for their states later in the year, national championships, July and August, and in September this year, spread out over a fair period of time. Fort goes with the ball from the middle and does nicely to get it inside for the Cats, but they're going to uh, well, they're going to turn it over, unfortunately, the Academy at the back there, and Herbert gets it around again. He gets wrapped up. And he gets the handball away. Simpson off a step, 30 out from goal, and it is touched, touched. and through for one behind to... 
the Cats. So they go to 10, 11, 71, and they lead the AFL Academy 2, 5, 17. Played 11 and a half in this third term. Short little kick in is okay. Dacos takes the mark inside 50, goes 250, and that Maris who gets it now, he goes out wide, so they're just getting possession. Dacos over the top, followed it up. They're going to sit for him. He's under pressure. Nice little handball back in board. Needs some support, though. Cats, the bigger bodies there, just able to sit over the top of the football. It comes back out quickly towards uh, Cholcraft at half forward. For, uh, they get involved, the Cats, and they go inside to Conning, and he will take a set shot for goal. About 45 out, close to the boundary line, in between the forward pocket and half forward. And it's probably, as you said, Jase, the uh, fatigue starting to kick in for some of these boys now, and it's the ability to really transition hard up and down the ground and, and probably switch your mind from attack back into defence. So a lot of these boys, I guess, is going through the junior ranks, they've been uh, the number one players in their teams, and they're probably uh, maybe a little bit more attack bias than defensive bias. So, um, so it's just those learnings. And as Shifter said, it's, it takes place over a matter of years. It's, it's something that is hard to try and switch immediately or to or to um, educate immediately but uh, as Shifter said this will be all cut up and feedback will be provided um, back to their state league clubs and hopefully something to work on in the second half of the year. Deconning missed that set shot for goal so the academy now at the back uh, at half back through Callaghan who will just hold it up now they'll go from half back towards the middle they've got a couple of uh, players there. One of them uh, was Howes, and he's got some support as well. So they drive it through half forward, go inside Conway, having a rest at full forward with Moyle in the ruck. But the Cats again, just with the numbers at the back, Ham. Outside goes short and wide. It's okay. McLaughlin takes the mark. He goes back towards Simpson at half back. Draws a player. Andrew comes out. Simpson comes, keeps going. Feigns a little handball. Runs through the middle. Ran a long way. Umpire said play on. He got the handball back quickly, which came from Chalcraft. He goes towards Narkle, who goes in and takes the mark. Mm. And we'll have a set shot for a goal from about 40. Holmes was running on but he couldn't get uh, him in front there, and he'll have a set shot now, Quentin Narkle. Look, it was well worked by the Cats, but just going back to the other side of the ground, it was Finn Callahan who, uh, who ran and carried the football down the outer wing and, and brought it back inside 50 um, to Ned Moyle. Finn Callahan is a, is a really exciting player who sort of bobbed up at the start of the year for the Sandringham Dragons. He's, uh, he's athletic, he can run, he's a beautiful size and a great user of the football, so it's great to see him get the ball in his hands. So Narkle, about 40 out from goal. Just better than a 45-degree angle comes in at the city end. I think he's, a mo he's uh, missed it to the near side. So he's tally 1-1 this afternoon. And Geelong go to 10-13-73. AFL Academy 2-5-17. So the Academy go to the outer side again. They can't quite hit the target, though. And numbers again with the Cats. Chalcraft got it. Goes back in looking for Holmes who made up a bit of ground. He couldn't quite get it. Now he does second effort. Handballs to DeConning in the pocket. His handball in the goal square was okay. And I think that might be Jordan Johnston who's kicked that. And it is. So he has kicked his third of the afternoon. And they go now to 11-13-79 Geelong. They lead the academy 2-5-17, 15 played third term. Playing well, Jordan Johnson. Uh, but it's probably the, the moment from Max Holmes to, uh, to go back with the flight of the ball. We probably knew that some contact might be coming, but kept his eyes on the footy one -on -one, in critical one-on-one -on -one and was able to uh, keep threading the ball through for a Geelong goal shifter. Yeah, and I'll pick up on your, your mention, just talking back to the Australian boys and the moments that they're showing the fin. Uh, Callahan, the boy that you talked about in that kick in, so so to a he kicked to a ruckman who was the full forward at the <laughs> time, but anyone a wee bit quicker on the lead, I think he's hit him lace out. It was a brilliant kick, yeah. wasn't it, on the run? So he's a boy that's he's got it ten times already, so he's up to about the third highest possession winner for the for the Australian under eighteen team. A boy that we hadn't heard of five weeks ago. It's fantastic mm. that boys can emerge in their eighteenth year, a bit like Toby Green did, Jackson McRae. They're the they're boys that couldn't. Well, they weren't seen in their 17th year. So kids come on at different rates, and Callahan's the, the example of this year. Uh, unheard of. All of a sudden, he's in, in amongst the best kids in Australia, and he's got the tools to play AFL. Lovely size, 189. He's quick. He's got that dynamic left foot, uh, and we've loved the way he's played to date for the Sandringham Dragons, and now the, the, the moments he's shown playing here for Australia today. Daycock's got the free kick in the middle. He pushed it wide towards Conway. The big fella got it inside 50. Now the Cats have moved it back outside. And they get it towards McLaughlin. The back end of centre wing. 
On the commentary box side, he comes back in board. Ockenbora gives the handball away quickly to Stevens. He runs through. Now it's a one-on-one, getting back there. You know, Bazo couldn't take the mark, and the numbers at the back with the Cats, they handball, and the handball came to Holmes. And that ball came from Jordan Johnston, and Holmes puts his second on the board for the afternoon. And, and the Cats 12, 13, 85, the Australian AFL Academy 2, 5, 17. It's something, Shifter, that going back to your, your point about these boys that are uh, appearing at the start of the year, doing a lot of Zoom interviews at the moment, Jase, to meet these kids mm. and to find out a bit about their stories. And um, it's, been, it's been really pleasing to hear how hard some of these boys worked on their game during their 17th year, which was obviously really COVID-affected. Mm. In Victoria, a lot of these boys didn't get to play any football at all, but you can still find ways to improve as a player, whether it's athletically, whether it's educating yourself, watching mm. AFL football, um, connecting with your coaches, with your teammates. And um, what's been really pleasing is to, to hear about how hard these boys worked through 2020 when they had so much adversity. So it's a credit to kids like Finn Callahan who come in and play so well so early because the work had been done throughout uh, the last 12 months. Back in the middle, Toby Conway gave a free kick away in the ruck contest, pleading his innocence again, Toby. But Subtolis takes the free kick for Geelong, and he goes towards half forward. Holmes can't take the mark. The front and centre was OK. Quickly came from Smith. They worked the handball away to Narkel on the outside again. 50 out towards an open goal square, and has just got over the top too. Bazo couldn't get a hand to it. So Narkel puts his second on the board, and Geelong... Go to 14 13 97. They lead the AFL Academy 2 5 17. 18 minutes played, final term. Oh, sorry, third term. Narkel up to about 22 disposals and showing that he mightn't be too far away from uh, getting back Play, into the Playing AFL some great side. footy there, Shifter. Mm. And, and so, what I'm, what I'm looking for as a recruiter right now is is obviously the Cats have got a, got a fair bit of momentum going. They've kicked the last three or four goals in a, in a row. I'd really mm. like to see. Who, which of these boys in, in the Australian, in the AFL Academy team are, are going to try and arm wrestle the mm. momentum back? Who, even mm. if it's just laying a couple of tackles, forcing mm. a couple of stoppages, trying to get the ball to live in their half for a little bit. So these are the moments that recruiters look for to say, well, it's all well and good when things are going well, yeah. but how do you mm. go when the momentum's against you? So it'll be interesting to see who stands up in the next 30 minutes. Moyle back in the ruck, the big fella. Horn through the middle, does nicely. Wheels around on the right foot and goes out wide. Looks for Wanganeen, finds him at the back end of the centre square. He goes out further afield, so the academy just got a little bit of time and space. The ball has come to Johnson, Matthew Johnson. He goes short over the top, just there. Was it a mark? No, the umpire said player Matt Roberts has got it. Back to Johnson, wide, and Rochelle off a step. Dacos over the top. They work the one, two, close to the boundary mm. line. 50 out and closing. Back in board is a good kick. A go. Center, Moyle off a step, right foot kick. Back towards the goal square. Cats back there. They just let it through for one behind. So the Academy go to 2-6-18, Geelong 13 13 91, and the Cats play on quickly. They go out wide, got the numbers. Stevens runs off half back, goes over the top to Holmes. He gets around, handball back in board. Missed the Ockham ball though. They've got the numbers, Geelong, at the back there though. Can they get it away? They can't. They do nicely. The uh, Academy to get back, Faye goes in, not, does nicely, but help holding the ball, said the umpire. The tackle came on. And For a boy who's grown up and, and not been allowed to have too much contact in Gaelic football, Stefan Ockenberry, <laughs> he does love the physical side of the game. He did. It was a nice tackle. There he goes out wide and tries to find Chalcraft close to the boundary line. They get around, work the one-two, kick over the top, and it might be a mark just taken in the pocket. It is, and I think it's Sam Simpson it is who will get up. And comes back in board. Well, he was looking uh, quickly there for uh, McLaughlin, but it didn't quite get to him. And the academy try and break free. They go out wide with the kick. And uh, with a turn of speed, as you'd expect, Burgoyne gets out there first, needs some support. Pack develops. The academy's got the numbers if they can get the footy out. And they do so. And they get it away through Burgoyne. He goes towards half forward. Cats, though, with the numbers at the back. Quickly came out Ollie Tate. And he goes short. They go through the middle. Ockenbore again, who takes the mark. And he goes from just inside the centre square long, back towards the goal square. Oh, it's going to mm-hmm. bounce past. I don't think uh, Hamilton could touch it as he went through, and he couldn't. And Ockenbore has put his first of the afternoon on the board. And the 14th for Geelong, 14, 13, 97. They lead the academy 2-6-18, and we've been playing 21 in the third term.
And he's a he's a kid, Steph Ockenbor, who we uh, who have been we've been following for a number of years back in uh, County Kerry, the same um, county as Mark O'Connor and Ty Canelli. Um, over the years, obviously got a great football rich uh, county there, and um, and Steph has had a lot of injury troubles over his first 18 months on our list. But it's great to see him just get a bit of continuity. He's playing in the midfield now. He he sort of is a bit of a rebounding defender, but um, we're just wrapped that he's able to uh, string together some games of football, and hopefully his development will continue as the year unfolds. So back to the middle, close to. Siren time for the third quarter. Moyle is back in the ruck for the academy. He goes up. Tolis gets it down to the back. Handball was chopped off, though, by Sonzi. They break free. The Cats still in the middle of the ground, and they get it free again. The big ruckman does nicely to follow up and help out. They've got m numbers on the outside. Kick inside towards DeConning, who goes up. Can't take the mark. Umpire says play on at the back. Pretty happy to see it through for a rush behind the academy. And they go to 14, 14, 98, Geelong, the AFL Academy 2, 6, 18. They play on quickly and go out wide. And Moyle is, needs some support out there. Dacos came to help, but Ockenbohr again at the back. Goes left and then goes right with a short little kick. And great smother came from Rochelle. And he has seen the ball over the boundary line on the outer side for a throw in. And they're the moments that we talked about, just Rochelle being able to smother the ball, force the stoppage, and, um, and hopefully the AFL Academy can uh, build a bit of momentum from this boundary throw-in. Just reset now the uh, Academy boys around the contest. Throw-in, just four to centre wing for Geelong. Moyle works his way to the front, and they get the ball back in board. Does it sit nicely? Wanganeen tried to take it with him and then helped out a teammate. And the Cats on the outside again. Simpsons handball at centre-half forward. Wangan uh, Burgoyne works back there, comes out to the uh, front of the ball, in front of the pack. Unfortunately for the academy, and McLaughlin goes mm. with a right foot kick and kicks the goal. So his first of the afternoon, and the 15th for Geelong, 15-14, 104. They lead the Australian AFL Academy 2-6-18, and we've played 23 and a half minutes in the third term. Yeah, great ext extraction there from, I think it was Luke Smith at half forward with his hands. And Jackson McLaughlin is actually a player who has gathered a bit of AFL interest over the last few years at VFL level. He's only small in stature, but he's, uh, he's got incredible footy IQ. Um, he's, a, he's a forward mid, he's a versatile player. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if clubs continue to monitor uh, someone like Jackson going forward because when he has the ball in his hands, he makes a difference. And, um, and he's building a great little career for himself at Geelong VFL. So, back in the middle for Moyle. And uh, the AFL Academy boys just making Dacos going to Ockenball now. So, they, both the Ruckman go up. They can't take it away. Dacos does nicely. Needs some support. Got it away quickly to Sonzi. Now they're free. Dacos again going forward. Going up. Punched away. Back towards Dacos. Followed up again and handball out nicely. Beautifully to Burgoyne, who 45 out right foot kick has unfortunately sprayed the ball. And it's out of bounds on the full. And it will have a resultant free kick to Cam Tahini when it comes back from the smallish crowd, but a big crowd on AFL.com.au. Well, the right people this. are here, aren't they? There'll be 200 scouts probably <laughs> That's exactly spread around right. the ground <laughs> making some decisions. I'll tell you what they can see. They can see a kid called Dacos with, <laughs> you call it footy now, footy IQ, whatever, game sense, all of those things. He's got every bit of that That's awareness. We use lots of different terms about the same thing. And you saw an example there. Where are you? He was under heat, under pressure, quickly knew what was around him and flipped it across to his teammate, uh, Oh, That's what the good players do, make great decisions under pressure at a great rate of speed. Well, when, you, when your surname's Dacos, I think you're just born with a footy brain from the outset, aren't you? And, that's, and that's the other, it's the fifth term, the footy <laughs> brain. And, and that's, like, and Nick's a kid who's been playing, um, playing above his age level shifter for, for a long time now. I still remember going to a game out at Kerry Grammar to watch um, Matt Rowell and Noah Anderson and um, was blown away by a, a year nine, year ten um, little smart, smooth, silky, silky player, and no surprise when I looked down at the team sheet, it had Nick Dacos' uh, his <laughs> name written on it. So I still remember. I don't know whether you were there that I day. I was there. Yeah. I was there. It was a deciding game in the championship, and uh, yeah, a big crowd there as well. And this 16-year-old boy, well, he's in the conversation with Rowland Anderson <laughs> for one of the better players when you're looking at him overall. 
exciting. And that was the first time I'd seen him. I'd heard a lot about him, uh, but then to see him then at 16. And, of course, uh, we were looking forward to watching him play last year. And like all of the Victorian boys, they missed that whole year. Mm -hmm. So that's why you've just got to take that into consideration as you assess all of the talent out of Victoria. Give them another half a year until they've got eight or ten games under their belt. Uh, So they're short of it. And the professional Geelong players, the knuckles of the world, although you're playing some AFL, they were training in an elite environment all year. Mm-hmm. So you just got to just weigh all that up and mm-hmm. be patient as you make your analysis on, well, not so much on Day because he's been terrific, but many of these boys is going to take a month or two longer to really show uh, their development and their AFL potential in the back half of the year. So getting back to that national championship, and I know that the WA squads are over there having a look at their mates playing today uh, for, for Australia. WA will play SA in the middle of the year. They'll then play the Allies in a national championship game. So we're talking July, August here, and then at the back end of the year, after the or around the time of the AFL Grand Final, they they'll play the Victorian sides. They'll play on the Friday before the Grand Final, the Tuesday after the Grand Final, as they come with SA to join the the two Vic sides in camp for. Uh, the, the climax to the year in terms of the under-19 national championships. And what, what I think is great about this shifter, speaking to Lee Walker and, um, and Adam Jones, who do a terrific job running the program over there in WA, it's great to see that, look, it's not just these boys who are out on the ground that are learning plenty from this experience. The, uh, the state academies all across Australia, whether it be WA, South Australia, the, um, the Vic Country, Vic Metro programs, will no doubt be watching this game and, and learning plenty. Um, so I think uh, the initiatives shown there by the academies to continue to educate. Look, obviously the poor WA boys at the moment would be playing waffle Colts footy right now if, uh, yeah. if it wasn't for a three-day lockdown. But they've still got an <laughs> opportunity to learn and to, and to keep getting better. Um, through a little bit of adversity, so um, so a shout out to uh, to Lee and 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 Jonesy and and the boys over there because they are doing it tough over this three day period, but. Um but we're looking forward to being over there, and I know a lot of recruiters are going, planning on heading over to Western Australia over the coming weeks with the way the fixtures are, are set, set up. So we're looking forward to being out there and watching those boys live over, over the next month. Uh, we might take a quick break. Now, Troy, you're, you're going because uh, Leon Harris is going to join us. Thanks for your, your efforts this afternoon, and good luck for the season. It's, uh, as Kevin just said, it's, uh, it's going to be a, a rich vein, hopefully, without any lockdowns, a rich vein of... Uh, of under-18 football and, and academy football, it's going to be it's going to be exciting. Yeah, thanks, Jase. I've loved being up here in the broadcast box. It's just great being back at the footy. Um, <laughs> to be honest, like we uh, just the little things that we cherish being able to get out to whether it's Craigieburn or um, <laughs> or here at the GMHBA Stadium, just being able to rub shoulders with the people we see so much of. And and the most important thing is to see these young players now be able to again show their show their talents, show their ability. And um, yeah, I, I'm very lucky to be doing what I'm doing, but uh, I. Think I think it's time for me to get back and actually do my job rather than uh, having a chat to you guys. <laughs> Thanks, Troy. Thanks for your efforts this afternoon. And, uh, and as I said, we'll take a quick break and Leon Harris will join us for the final term uh, here at GMH, GMHBA Stadium, Geelong 15 14 104, the AFL Academy 2 6 18. Back in a moment.
Welcome back to GMHBA Stadium. Geelong 15-14-104 leading the Australian AFL Academy 2-6-18 at three-quarter time. Great Kevin Sheehan is still with us and great to be joined by AFL legend Leon Harris. Hello, Leon. Welcome Hello. To, the, to the broadcast. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for coming and uh, you've been having a, a good look at the boys uh, this morning and this afternoon. Yeah, no, certainly uh, doing that and uh, been uh, around the space for quite a few years. <laughs> Not as long as Shifter, but uh, I've been watching over the last probably 25 years, 30 years. So uh, it's good to have a look and it's been a bit of an education for the boys, but uh, it's more what they take out of it, I think, than what they can deliver today. So Mac Andrew is starting in the ruck for the academy and takes it out of the centre for the first time in this final term and they get it forward. The academy kicking to the city end in this final term. That's a pretty good moment there for Mac Andrew. She yeah. uh, competed well at that set of bounce, but then at ground level and hit the deck, he's come away like a midfielder. Uh, and his hand to foot so natural. He's kicking so natural for a boy that, uh, well, he's played footy most of his life, not all his life, uh, coming, um, of course, uh, a, a Sudanese youngster that come in uh, in his early years and his older brother got him into footy. They've been... Uh, basketball probably in their their backgrounds before that in soccer but uh, he's looked quite comfortable in his nag, nab league games to date and even out here today he's had some terrific encouraging moments now the ball's come to oscar brownless at half back but holding the ball said the umpire so good uh, pressure by the academy and the ball is with matt roberts at half forward and he goes long towards the top of the square at the side of the pack can they pick the footy up Moyles over the top of the big fella? He tried to get the handball out. He did so in the end, but uh, the Geelong defence working overtime there and uh, it will be a ball up about 25 out from the academy goal. It's good to see Matty Roberts get involved. He's probably played more forward than probably thought he'd play a little bit more around the ball, but uh, he's a very talented player and uh, he's done exceptionally well how he's progressed through from the 16s. I think, Kevin, that's, that's part of what you said in the third term about boys who are normally playing rover or ruck rover or on the mm, ball mm. being able to adapt to a half-forward flank or a forward pocket. Yeah, It's a bit it, different, isn't it? It is. Once you go up a level, you've got to be multiple in terms of uh, your ability to play in a range of positions, playing multiple roles, and Matt Roberts shows that. Uh, play half-back. Get it out. Oh, mid. great work by Mac Andrew in front. Yeah, Did nicely right in front of DeConning. So and the big ruckman takes the mark and will push the ball back forward for the academy. He goes along with a right foot kick now. It's good for distance off the back of the pack. You can see Dacos running out, but he's going to have a couple in front of him. And one, the first one there was Tahini for Geelong. And they go out wide, and Herbert takes the mark, and they play on quickly, go towards centre, uh, centre wing. Johnson takes the mark. They've moved it nicely. Run through the centre wing position. Now go to De Conning, who's one out. As he does nicely, gets up and does very nicely in defence and sees it over the boundary line. Yeah, Bazo's played uh, forward all this year at uh, local footy and that, so playing a different role today. I know he, he's played defence uh, last year and that, but uh, probably a bit of a, uh, a shock, I reckon, <laughs> the way the ball's been coming in at times. So he's been competitive. And very much what we were saying about the smaller boys too, Leon. I mean, playing oh. different positions for the bigger boys as well against bigger blokes. Yeah, well, that's probably the role he's going to come into. Yeah. If I was probably as your third defender, so it's good to see him uh, back in that role. So on centre wing on the outer side, Andrew put on a bit of pressure, but the Cats have the numbers and can come back in board, and Burke takes the mark. He's going to be able to switch the play, and they run off half back, the Cats, and go towards the middle. No mark taken by Holmes. His second effort was OK, and he goes wide. It's like good with a kick. Right on half forward, and taking the mark is Jordan Johnston. Right on 50, goes to the top of the square with a kick to Conning. Tried to get a run at, and he puts his stick, stuck the hands up but over the shoulder, said the umpire. And will be a free kick free for, kick. for the academy. Gips, yeah, Gipkus goes, He's oh, he just missed the target with his kick, unfortunately, uh, over the head and out of bounds for a throw-in. So just his a skill error there. Was, his first quarter was exceptional. The way they attacked the ball and things like that. It's been probably hard work since, but he's, he's showed enough in the first quarter the ability to attack the ball and come out, and he likes to fly for the ball. So, yeah, a very talented young player. So... Andrew in the ruck against De Conning. Ball comes to the front of the pack. And now it comes out the back quickly. The ball came to Brownless. Back high kick, about 30 out from the Geelong goal. Short little kick came through the middle by uh, Luke Smith. And he's missed it and threw for one behind. So Cats go to 15-15-105. They lead the Academy 2-7-19. We've played four and a half in this 
final term. And the academy play on and go long towards half back. But Brownless chops it off and takes the mark for the Cats. He goes back in board. Great play. And uh, that's Horn, who has done nicely, read the ball and just wants to hold the play up now. He just wants to chip the ball over the top. So okay. And taking the mark is Matthew Johnson. Right at half back. Thought about the handball. He can go wide. He's got Andrew and he's also got Erasmus out there. Erasmus takes the mark. He's still got Andrew on the wing. So the big Ruckman's done nicely. He plays on and goes with a right foot kick towards centre half four. Geelong have the players behind the ball, unfortunately. Shannon Neal takes the mark and he plays on quickly. They switch the ball out wide and short little kick over the top to Simpson. He's got Ockham Ball in support, so he gives him the handball over the top at half forward. His handball further afield. They come back in board. The Cats, it's OK. They've got the numbers there, and Ollie Tate takes the mark and will shoot for goal from 45 out. They had the, had the ball there, Kev, but unfortunately they just 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 turned the ball over, you know, having a look at the, the wider ground. The setup is um, something that obviously the coaches will talk to them about in future and around how they move the ball. Yeah, so many learnings, I suppose, in this uh, three and a half quarters of footy to date. Mm. Uh, I notice a few over on the haunches a little bit too, taken in the big <laughs> breath, uh, even the intensity of the game. These Geelong VFL players are moving the ball very quickly. Uh, there's little time to, uh, to second-guess yourself if you're one of these youngsters that normally plays under 18 footy. I think there's about four of them uh, in the Australian side that have played senior state league footy, yeah. only the four. Yeah. Jacob Van Ruen has, has played a senior game over there at Claremont, and, of course, Jason Horn has seen a bit of him. Mm -hmm. He's played a lot in the last two years at South Adelaide. Yeah. Uh, uh, Josh Fay and Austin uh, uh, as well, uh, young Harris, has played for the Gold Coast in the VFL. So only... A, you know, it's only a handful yeah, a of smattering of it, really, isn't it? it yes, that yeah. sort of experience. But uh, this will really add to their knowledge and development over over the course of this year. Tate kicked the goal, so the Cats 16, 15, 111 oh. lead the Academy 2, 7, 19. But the Academy work hard. Andrew again having a good uh, run in the ruck at the moment. They get it towards half forward. Cats move the ball through the centre of the ground up towards DeConning again, who comes Ooh. at it. Ooh, flying, and he might have. Uh, no, he's okay. He's up. And uh, so is O'Loughlin, who was there. He's a bit... Uh, we'll keep an eye on him at half-back. The ball goes towards centre wing. Rochelle comes in. Cats with the numbers, but uh, Rochelle, good uh, pressure. Put the tackle on, the umpire. And it will be a ball up. It's a brave effort, O'Loughlin, to stand oh, right it? underneath. He and he has cra been crashed big time. <laughs> but being a tough little man that he is, he'll jump up, no doubt. So uh, he's in the hands of the trainers, but up and is coming to the bench. And a little bit of cramp here in the middle, right where the ball is going to be balled up. It can't be just yet. There's a break in play. Rachel. Yeah. And he's coming off with a bit of a limp with the cramp. Rochelle is in the hands of the runner. So he's coming off as well. So ball up. Moyle went up against Fort. And straight lined it there was Johnson for the academy. Ball spills to Brownless. Runs from half back into the middle, looking for Simpson over his head to Conning. He comes out, arrives around handball to Ockenball. He runs through the middle, crowd the loose man now, Geelong. 45 out, Holmes to finish it off with a right foot kick. I think he's missed it, and he has. And through for one behind. So they go to 16, 16, 112, Geelong. The AFL Academy 2, 7, 19. A quick kick in is OK. And the ball, Erasmus goes back in board. It's OK. Faye takes the mark. Wants to switch the play out wide. That's better. And they've got a bit of space now. The academy. They go towards centre wing. They've got it out there quickly. And they go now. Short little kicks okay back in board. That's for Hamilton. He just holds the play up. Back towards centre half four for the big fella. Moyle goes up. Takes mm. the mark. Does nicely. Handballs it away. Faye in support. Gets the left foot kick inside 50. Getting back there is Fort for Geelong. And the kick around the corner comes towards Johnston. He's going to be up against uh, Maris there. Numbers with the Cats. Can they get it away, though? They can't. And the oh. ball from Rankin did nicely. Now, what's the umpire picked out? He's picked out a free kick for the Academy. Yes, it's coming back to Lockie Rankin. At left half forward for the Academy. He's got a couple of short leads. He goes towards there. No mark taken. And it was sort of one against four there for Geelong. They had the numbers at the bottom of the pack and then they can go wide. And McLaughlin takes the mark at half back for the Cats and just slowing the play down. Comes back in board. Mark taken 
by Herbert over the top with a handball. They go towards half forward. One hand up, Saptolas can't take the mark. Horns there again, breaks free, runs away. Was going to go back in board, now comes with the left foot out wide. It's okay, they've got the numbers there. Oh, no mark taken, unfortunately, by Sonzi. And sees it over the line for a boundary throw-in. We played nearly 10 minutes in this final term. Geelong 16, 16, 112, the AFL Academy 2, 7, 19. And pleased with Horn, I think, today mm. for, for what he's done. He had good composure on that occasion there to to assess all of the options. He didn't have anything away on his right side. There was nothing that long down the line and just uh, used the left foot quite competently to get across towards Sonsi. So the the ball... actual midfielders worked their way back into the game after the first quarter. They were probably beaten quite convincingly early, but they actually nullified the dominance, I suppose, mm. of uh, Constable and Narkel and Fort was outstanding in the first quarter. So those three guys actually set it up, but I reckon they battled hard to actually try to nullify their dominance. So the ball has come from Sam Simpson at half forward, goes to Constable, he goes inboard. The Cats with the numbers at the back, about 25 out from goal, and a kick around the corner is OK, and the goal has gone to, uh, to Jordan Johnston, so he has kicked his fourth of the afternoon. And the 17th for Geelong, they 17, 16, 118. They lead the AFL Academy 2, 7, 19, 11 minutes played in the final term. It was just a contest with Johnson v Maris uh, probably a minute ago mm. across half-back. And Johnson's North Ballarat Rebels at that stage probably three or four years ago. Maris just 12 months and uh, it's just the strength. Yeah. So that's what we saw comparing mm -hmm. the bodies three or four years or a lot of them so <laughs> Kevin's been uh, saying that today I mean you can see I mean you, you can see I mean 17 year old boys against 20 year old men it's, yeah. a bit, it's just a bit different isn't it yeah, for um, that Fort being the ruckman yeah. he's yeah. been around for a yeah. long period of time and credit to him to the way that he's performed and uh, the challenge that he's taken as well so had off be quite easy for him just to say oh yeah I don't need to in a yeah, game that's right. like this yeah. uh, Fort goes from the middle on cue from Leon he goes inside 50 Big pack there. Johnson, the last goal scorer, is there. He can't take it with him. And the academy defence working over time. They break free. Simpson kick around the corner. Mm. And it's a good kick. So Sam Simpson kicks Well, just to say, first. Sam Simpson, whenever he played against Brisbane the last <laughs> few years, has dominated. <laughs> so for him to dominate at AFL level against a very good team, we like to think Brisbane, and to come and play back. I know he's coming back after injuries, but he's just been a dominant player today. Jace, we've mentioned uh, that this, these games against uh, the Australian under-18s and State League opponents have been going on for quite a number of years. It's only been on a couple of occasions the Australian under-age side has won. <laughs> and no <Yep>. surprisingly, <laughs> in Super Draft 2, a group that included Sam Walsh, Connor Rosie, the King Twins, all these boys, that great group, Bailey Smith, uh, Taron Thomas, Bailey Scott, all those boys beat the North Melbourne side. That would have been a the fun VFL game to watch, Kev, I would have thought. Yes. They played fantastic that day, so it, yeah. it doesn't always happen. No. It's meant to be a development program where you learn, you learn about what the expectations are of uh, playing against listed players. Is and It's been, well, hopefully a great learning experience. In time, we'll see how it, it, it comes out, but just having had that short preparation for a few days, it's always they're always going to be up against it today, but that doesn't mean that they won't take a lot away that they can apply to their footy for the remainder of the year. Constable for the Cats goes towards uh, centre half forward. Mark taken there by McLaughlin. He goes outboard to Brownless. 45 and closing for goal and has kicked it. Good kick by Oscar Brownless there. So he kicks his first of the afternoon and the 19th for Geelong. 19, 16, 130. They lead the AFL Academy 2, 7, 19. Kevin, I'm going to make a bold prediction here. I think Mac Andrews got a little bit to, to go. He is nice. He, he looks like he's got a fantastic vertical leap. Oh, and he looks what very raw, today. but he's going to be yeah. he's going to be okay, I think. Love what I've seen today. Two hundred centimetre boy. That um, well, is he eighty kilos? He wouldn't be yes. much more than that at the That's moment. Right. But the way he moves, his natural hand to foot, yeah. uh, his kicky ability, uh, but that mobility is quite yeah. special. And and you see him in the ruck, but he might be able to play key defence or even key forward. In watching him at NAB League level just uh, last weekend, he wasn't in that squad at that stage, mm. but an opportunity come with another injury, but. The way he got off his opponent leading as a full forward was very impressive. He got speed off the mark, 
So all those elements, uh, mm. but there's enough there to say uh, mm. this guy could well be you know, following in the footsteps of the other Sudanese boys that have played in the mm. AFL. Mad Jack Daw, of course, being the first, and then uh, CJ at Hawthorne. Shungatu Giath is, uh, well, he's quite a sensation yes. coming off halfback <laughs> at the moment for the Hawthorne uh, Football Club. Cats go towards centre wing, but it's chopped off by a Rochelle who goes over the top, and they can move it. The academy now, they've got players in front. They go inside looking for Conway. He's got the sit at the back. It's over his head in the end, and also came towards Jack Williams. Comes back towards Brownless, who has to go with Moyle. Conway's in there as well. The two big blokes down forward, and the pack develops about 30 metres out from the academy goal, and we're going to have a ball up. A few big talks in that uh, event there. Mm. <laughs> it was Williams, it was Moy, it was uh, who else we got down Conway, there? there's Conway three of them down well, there, yep. All yeah. In one part of the ground. Moyle's going to go up and he puts it down past a couple of Geelong Tahini was there and he gets wrapped up. Still inside the Academy's Ford 50 and we'll have another ball up. I know the score is what it is, but uh, I know going back to my Vic Country games, uh, there was quite often, especially at National 16s or 18s at times, where it was quite uh, score maybe similar, but it was more what they took away from it mm. than what actually happened on the day. So I'm sure these guys will realise where they've got to get to and the work they've actually got to put in. So the ball goes across to Neil at uh, defensive 50 for Geelong at the city end of the ground. Nick Dacos in back play with uh, a little bit of cramp. He's done some hard running this afternoon. They go short to Brownless at centre-half back. And doesn't quite hit a target. Well Faye done. comes the other way. Does nicely. Picks it up. Gets it away quickly. Johnson gets it away. Handball. Came from Harris. Doesn't quite hit the target. Now the Cats go the other way. Simpson he wants to go long, he said. So he takes a bounce. Conway comes at him. He goes with a right foot kick. Long. Goes up looking for Johnston. He can't take the mark. Kick around the corner. And mm. Stolas will take the mark. And will shoot the goal from... 45 out, pretty much straight in front. Big Paulie, a Maribyrnong secondary boy that I've uh, had a bit to do with over the course of time, uh, as we're aware, ba uh, basketball background, but he has always played some football, so he's not starting afresh, and you can tell by the way he plays, the way he moves, that he's got a really good feel for the footy game. So Tolis will come in for a set shot. 45 out, right foot kick, and pretty close. He's put it through, so good finish by him. It's a great pick-up for the Geelong Footy Club to get him as a rookie B and things along those lines. So locally, uh, living probably uh, close to the western suburbs and that, so watched him play the last few games at uh, NAB League, so his improvement's been fantastic. So Geelong 2016, 136, they lead the AFL Academy 2 7 19, seven, eight and a half minutes played in the final term. And those interested in the stats, Charlie Constable for the for the Cats VFL side has had the 29, Simpson up to 25, Ockenbore with 23, Narkel 22, and Nick Stevens, uh, one of their draftees of last year with 22, along with Max Holmes, another draftee. Mm -hmm. So two of their young boys just in their 19th mm -hmm. year. Uh, quite impressive today. And for the Australian under-18 side, it's Dacos with 25 disposals, Faye with 23. And Matt Johnson loves some of his work, has, uh, has had the 13 disposals. A really impressive type of player at 193 through the midfield, a boy from Subiaco in West Australia. He's just come back from a uh, long-term injury too, Kevin. So um, he's only played a bit of uh, local footy, so he'd be underdone. Cats have moved it from uh, the midfield up forward, close to goal, and a uh, good punch away by Wanganeen there at the last line for the academy. So through for a rush behind it. The Cats, 2017-137, they lead the academy 2-7-19. And short little kick in is OK. And Gibkus takes the mark in the back pocket. He chips the ball short again. Erasmus takes the mark, just the 15. Plays on now. Wants to switch the play and go wide to the outer side it's okay and just controlling the play at the back here the academy a few blokes leading from along the line he goes in that direction and off hands at the back i think coming quickly was van ruin 
but couldn't get there in time. So a boundary throw in on the half forward flank. And Neil Erasmus, the boy from uh, well, he's from Subiaco, West Australia, also has looked looked to have some real AFL traits today. A beautiful mover at uh, 189 centimetres, uh, strong overhead. Beautiful natural kick of the ball and looks capable of playing a range of spots out in the ground as well. So he's had uh, an impressive day knowing the, the difficulty he had in, in knowing whether he's playing or not mm. uh, 24 mm. hours ago. So uh, <laughs> yes. been one of the better players, Erasmus, for Australia. Kicking board came from Septolos again for Geelong and uh, quickly into the forward line, mark taken by Smith. So he's going to have a set shot for goal from 30 out directly in front. Uh, 20 minutes played in this final term and a few final changes for the academy off the bench as well. They'll sleep well tonight, Kev, anyway, won't they? The boys they will sleep <laughs> well tonight and then they'll have interviews on with clubs tomorrow. So a bit of speed dating, if you like, where they'll yep. talk to multiple clubs who will get just their backgrounds, get to know the boys a wee bit more. Part of their profiling, basically. Not, that no, happened in Melbourne, yes. That will happen in Melbourne. Yep. There's no right and wrong answers with it all, but yep. uh, it's a, a case of the clubs getting to know uh, just, uh, well, I even get some feedback on what they felt about today mm. to see how boys analyse their performance, what they're going to plan to do with, uh, you know, to work on the, I suppose, areas of strength as well as their areas that are, they're deficient at at the moment. Uh, they'll get that uh, uh, that experience tomorrow by meeting all of the clubs or quite a number of the clubs. Of, uh, they spend three hours at that in the morning reviewing uh, today and, and, and chatting about their plans for this year. It's an exciting, yeah, we look forward to it as an AFL recruiter. I actually mm. get to have some time because last year we didn't get the opportunity to actually travel in the state much so, uh, and the Victorian boys didn't play. So it's a great opportunity for us and, that, and then we'll follow up later in the year with uh, probably most of them again having a home visit. So the academy work at Inside to 50, and they came through. Rochelle and uh, got it towards Jack Williams. He couldn't take the mark off hand, so it will be a boundary throw in there, deep into attack here. In the final stages of this ma match, Conway will do the ruck work for the academy up against Sitolas. And umpires found a free kick going to go to the academy, and they've called advantage. Goes back towards Williams again. Tahini's there as well, close to the boundary line and out. So we will have a, a boundary throw in about 20 around. So we played 22 in this final term. I'll be sneaking down to the boundary line just <laughs> to have a, a, a chat to, right at the end of the game to, to Tark and Lockyer, but uh, it's been terrific to get the opportunity that Geelong's provided us uh, with to play on this magnificent stadium, uh, the experience for the boys. So I'll, I'll duck down now, and uh, and thanks for being able to cooperate in, in getting the broadcast up to, so that uh, the fans can see some of the faces of the future, uh, that they're friends also and their families across Australia can watch these boys play and uh, it is the start, not the end, it's the start of what's going to be a, a very exciting year for all these young men Thanks Kevin for your time and uh, good luck for the, uh, for the, for the year, it'll be uh, fantastic Kevin Sheehan joining us on afl.com.au this afternoon for the AFL, Australian AFL Academy uh, versus the Geelong VFL game so uh, late stages, as we said, 22 and a half played in the final term. It's 21-17, 143 Geelong. The uh, Academy is 2-7-19. The Academy boys have got it uh, locked in. They have had it for the last couple of minutes in their forward 50. So an opportunity for them to kick another goal deep into this final term. Moyle goes up, the big fella, and he handballs it out, looking for Dacos, who can't take it with him. Now the Cats have it through Ockenball, get it forward to Simpson who runs through half back, going to be under pressure gets away, takes a bounce, backs himself takes two bounces, got Ockenball in support, he goes out wide, might be okay, goes towards McLaughlin, he goes from 45, open goal square and kicks the goal, so Jackson McLaughlin has kicked his second of the afternoon and the 22nd for Geelong 22-17-149 they lead the academy 2-7-19 Pretty impressive uh, run from one end to the other, <laughs> wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, the poor academy boys were doing a bit of chasing, but uh, certainly uh, Cooper Hamilton's chase, and he's a fantastic runner, uh, a sub six uh, in the 2K and everything like that. So uh, athletically, his profile is uh, exceptional. But uh, the boys are doing a little bit of chasing today, so hopefully uh, in their local footy, when they get back to it, they'll, they'll be able to control the ball a bit more at local level. So back to the middle. And uh, Burgoyne in the middle now for the academy as well. As we said, been impressed with Mac Andrew in the final term in the ruck. 
for the academy. Oh, and the umpire will have to come back and do that again. There was one ruck contest before they contested, and the ball did go into uh, the forward 50 of uh, the academy boys. Mm. And the ball come back. He was out on the wing actually picking up, not a ruckman, but picking <laughs> up one of the opposition midfield players. So yeah, credit, uh, credit to him. So coming in, Michelle puts on a tackle, just uh, loses it though, and the Cats through half back can go towards centre wing. Shawcraft takes the mark. He can go short to Septolis, who takes the mark. In between wing and half forward, he goes towards half forward, and just a stronger and bigger body there by Charlie Constable taking the mark. He goes back in board, looking for Ockenbore at the back. He can't pick it up. Cat's at the front of the pack fort, wrapped up by Horn, and holds him up in that tackle, and we'll have a ball up. So there is the siren for a full time in this game, and it's Geelong 22-17-149, defeated the Academy 2-7-19, and Luke Smith with four, with four, and Jordan Johnson with four, leading the way for the goals for Geelong and uh, for the academy. Their goals, uh, Jack Williams and Josh Rochelle has have kicked, uh, Rochelle have kicked those two goals for the academy this afternoon. So, um, it's a it's a start of a journey, Leon. Now for these boys through this process, this is the first step in what's going to be a, a fairly important and and long year for them in terms of games and uh, and the recruiting process, I suppose, that goes through now. Oh, it's well and truly, and then the Nationals at the end of the year. Mm. It's a different format this year, so uh, they've got a lot of footy ahead of them. And as I've just said before, it's basically it's more what they take out of it than uh, what they've delivered today. Yeah, everyone wants to play well, and we've seen bits and pieces from a lot of them uh, to perform at different intervals consistently, yeah, did that happen? There's probably only a couple that would say consistently over the game that they're, they're happy with. But as I said, if they just if there's snippets of it, you know they've got talent, and it's just maturity with a lot of them. So, yep, there's futures, lots of futures ahead of them, and uh, yeah, it'll be exciting to watch. So, uh, wrapping up here, Geelong, as we said, winners over the academy, but a, uh, a good effort by the uh, boys who came together four or five days ago and have put in the effort the, this morning and this afternoon for this game against the Geelong VFL team. 22 17 149, the AFL Academy 2 7 19. Leon, thanks for your time and uh, good luck for the year. I appreciate it. Thank <laughs> you. No, it's great to be a part of, and it's, as I said, I'm sort of. Like Kevin, I've been involved in the footy game. And I was fortunate to be a player and then went into the coaching ranks and then managing and then now in a recruiting. And it's great to actually sit and watch and watch these guys develop. And the opposition, Geelong, like a lot of those guys were part of the uh, academy programs or big country programs that I've been involved in over the course of time. So it's just uh, familiar faces and uh, careers will be great careers out of some of these guys. Well and truly. Thanks, Leon, again, and thanks also to Kevin Sheehan, Tom King, and uh, the AFL uh, team as well here today at GMHBA Stadium. Geelong, as we said, 22 17, 149, the AFL Academy 2719. We'll wrap things up here at GMHBA, Jason Doherty, and thanks for joining us on afl.com.au. Thanks.